Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adam, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rackia Gafford, David Robinson, David Wayne Foster, Daz Studio 68, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik 86, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life Is Short, Maria Neeland, Matt, Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nathan Thompson, Nyby, Rob H, Skeptic936, Steve ALM, Texas Mike, The Flat Earth Channel.com, The Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Tom Herkins, Unbelievable Productions, and Windrider. So a massive shout out of thanks to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now, what is on possibly the brightest and nicest days of the year so far? I'm going to say. A very warm welcome to those of you in the Discord and G Plus panels for hopefully uh, entertaining the people in this premiering stream with your dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi, I got a new channel member. What's Good morning. Hey, how you doing? How do you f what? the other? all the other I uh, didn't hear a word of that say that again or don't it's entirely up to you did I interrupt no not at all how you doing 10th man anybody wonderful oh he's back <clears throat> They're clicking in and out, maybe drop and come back. Morning, Tenth. Good morning. Good How do you, morning. Where are all the directories to all the other? Party Poet, you, you seem to be dropping in and out of connection. Maybe drop from the uh, Discord server, refresh the Discord server, then rejoin the Discord server. Is that not allowed as a question? You're not hearing <laughs> what I'm saying clearly because your Discord server connection is terrible. So you can't hear me telling you that we can't hear you. You just keep breaking up over and over again. Can you disconnect from Discord? Refresh, then rejoin? Here, party poet, I'll help you. I'll disconnect you. Just rejoin again, okay? Oh, he's going to love that. <laughs> That's the problem. When someone's got a terrible connection, they can't hear you telling them they've got a terrible connection, so they just keep trying over and over again to repeat themselves. And then when Righteous goes to disconnect them, to you cut me off. Uh, he won't know if he didn't hear me. It just might be like a last connection or something. Hey, guys, can I have a mic jack? Is this working okay? Yeah, you sound fine. Excellent. Okay. Mic check. Hey, Neil. Your name is Neil. It's Neil check, not mic check. <laughs> <laughs> A deer just ran right in front of my car. I almost clipped it. I'm glad you did it. Dear, oh dear. If you had hit it, it cost you a lot of dough to fix your car. What was that? But I'm glad you didn't hit it because if you damaged your car, it would have cost you a lot of dough. Oh, they wrecked the cars, I know. No, wrecked dough. D-O-E. 
Actually, our next door neighbor, her her, her dad just passed away. <laughs> So we got to we're at a funeral. We're gonna be at a funeral today, and they're gonna do that whole thing where only five or ten people can go in at once. So it's really? kind of crazy what they're doing. You can't even bury your loved ones the same way you used to. Hey Nathan, is a is a five minute video too long for uh, a segment that we put in your show, or or is that need to be trimmed down a wee bit more? Do you think? Depends what you're talking about. Is it a video you've made? Yeah, it has. Be as long as you like. As long as it's oh, all right. Oh, well, uh, as long as it's yours. I do have a video I took down the beach, just uh, and it's pretty good view of a lighthouse at 27 miles. Okay. Now, I've uploaded to YouTube, obviously, so it's just a link you need. Is that how this works? Essentially, yeah. Excellent. If I've, got, if I've got the link and it's published on YouTube, I can just play it. But if it's okay. perfect, perfect. If it's footage that you've taken with your own camera, then ideal. I'm not in the slightest bit stressed about playing it. I don't care how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Post it in Discord here, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. There you go. I put some notes on it, but I'm happy to chat through it, or if anybody has any questions about what I was doing and. The different places that I take, I put up some map screenshots as well, just to uh, uh, to show exactly looks where flat. it's coming that, from. Um, looks flat. Is that what I'm looking at? That's the one. Yeah, that's the oh, one. okay. Get it up. And there's two. There's two little small ones as well. Uh, one that is pretty sure this qualifies as a black swan, which I'll just get. Well, it's on the same channel, but I'll post the link. It's very, it's very short, it's only a minute long. Um, Who one boat at about talking? two miles and then a tanker behind it. Grave dodge, what are you talking? Who's talking to Nathan Oakley? Uh, and the third one is just a couple of screenshots put into a small video file. Um, of two boats that I took a photograph within a couple of minutes of each other, one at six miles, one at uh, 17 miles. Okay, I've got that playing out now for people who will watch this when it's uploaded on Nathan Oakley channel, the like pre show. That's the noise you can hear. Yeah, because I do I do a complete scan the whole way from looking east, sort of right up the northeast. So there's a there's a big sort of view of where I am to Scotland, and uh, right up to the Ilsa Craig, which is 47 miles away. Uh, so I think it's pretty good footage. You know, it's a wee bit hazy, but you know, it's there. Not been paying close enough attention to it to it to know if thus far it's shown some sort of demarcation point that you can actual mar actually mark where you know, I don't know five miles three miles however far the horizon should be. Is there anything to actually mark that? Um, probably not on the first video, but on the third small video I put up, which is only uh, two photographs and two maps, I actually drew out uh, circles on on the map so as you can actually see the distances. The circles are six miles each uh, on the third small one. On the third video. So this, the, this making videos is new to me, so I'm not... Is it the one that starts with Stenoline? Yeah. Okay, I'll just put that one up. And you'll actually see, it's only, th it's only three pictures, it's only four pictures put together, and you'll actually see the concentric circles going out, showing you that each one is six miles. I've got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's showing. Got gotcha. you. Very good. Excellent. And I was able to catch the name of the boat and all because as I was doing it, I was able to log into the ship tracer, and it's good good program because it shows you the the track of the ships. It shows you where they've come from, and I'm pretty used to them going up and down. 
that channel. I only live about a, a couple of miles from the shore, so I'm, I'm down pretty regular. So I'm used to seeing the boats and where they go and what channels they take. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Oh, no problem. Just got a chance to start using the P900. It's been sitting there for months and I finally get some weather to go out. Mind you, you have to climb over barriers because of the lockdown. All these silly people not letting you into places. Right. Uninformed, but still silly people, you're right. Yeah. I actually do like the second video. I like the wee boat with the tanker going behind it. Uh, let's get that one up. Does that also start with the standard line? I just got the same video twice. I think I've got the same one twice. D S C N O one four three. Catchy tile. Oops. There we go. Everybody's favorite time of the day because it's time to punch the What the hell? <laughs> Next video automatically played. <laughs> well, that was different. Yeah, indeed. Lost the video I was playing that. There we go. That Shulkin shows? So, Grave Dodger, this is the second video. Far clearer tankers. Right, sorry about that, guys. A phone went and I had to take it. Sorry about that. That's okay. We've got your, the one that you said you liked the best with the second, with the two, two boats, one of which has got a load of yeah. containers on it. Yeah, yeah the, the, the wee small fishing boat, it's, um, it's at about, I think it's around about two miles, maybe just over. And the big tanker at the back is in the channel that is the, the sort of six mile channel that they use when they're in close to the shore. And I think there's nice clear footage of um, plenty of water between the boat, uh, the small fishing boat and the tanker, as you can see. Right. And how high are you? Uh, about ten, 10 feet. I go to the same spot, so I'm not over 10 feet. It's just a, it's a low car park. Oh, in fact, on, on this one, actually, I'm, it'll be, I'm actually standing, sorry, at the water's edge on this one, so it'll be, I'm 5, I'm 5'10", five, so I suppose the camera's at about 5'5", five, five or something like that. Okay. Afternoon, guys. Hey, Adam. Good to have you. You're right. Um, are you aware of Heath Carmody? Grave Dodger. No, no, I'm not sorry. Heath Carmody's got a piece of software that you can. You just if you just sent him the link to this. So if you if you went onto Heath Carmody's channel and dropped a link with a reasonably concise message that said, "Please, can you run this through your Swanalyzer?" <laughs> He'll, he'll analyze <laughs> the, the 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 consistency in terms of the you know the distance to horizon the all, all the information you'd want from it in terms of analyzing a black swan basically is is what he's right. come up with with his his piece of equipment or his piece of software sorry called the swan Swanalyzer. <laughs> so I yeah. like that. Uh, Heath Carmody is the name of the channel. Excellent. 
Oh, once again, thank you very much for that. Uh, start no the problem. live show. Welcome on this wonderful day to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. And before I introduce our wonderful panel of both Discord and G Plus panel members, I'm going to say a very warm welcome to my latest member who's joined as a Yoda, although he has actually retracted his message that he put with it, which is a bit odd, so maybe I shouldn't shout him out. <laughs> I'll get some clarity on that, as I do have a new Yoda, but they maybe don't want to that announced. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know. I'll maybe get some clarity. But uh, in the meantime, a very warm welcome to the Adam Meakin, Righteous Force, and Tenth Man in G+, and uh, everyone in Discord. So hello, one and all. Good morning. Hello, hello. Maybe tune into the uh, Uncut and After Show on my second channel, Nathan Oakley, if you want to find out who my new, uh, <laughs> my new member is. So there we go. Any signs of physical earth curve edges, formerly known as earth curve? Not from Parachute, Colorado. Not that I can draw a tangent to. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good reply. Not that I can draw a tangent to. You need to, though, for it to work in a geometric model. Any signs of axial rotation? Not of the Earth-based variety. Discord, anybody? No signs of that. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? It's over there. Where is he? But... Where's Arwen? Right, as soon as that sun question comes up. There he is. Ah, <laughs> any evidence, there's any there's evidence of the distance? Hours. Any evidence of the distance Technical. to the sun? Yes, it's over there. It, I put a bit of work into this, Alwyn, right? And the sun's out today, and I know over there, right, there's a, there's a Sainsbury's, and that's about a mile and a half away, and it's definitely further than Sainsbury's. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's so accurate. Right. Further than Sainsbury's. Well, that's more than we get off the ballers. Definitely further than Sainsbury's. Right. Moving on. Any scientific evidence of gravity? That's tough. There's no way to even get a scientific evidence concerning an effect. Can't really no, prove an effect. No scientific evidence. Any more for any more? Uh, and the black one. What is that? <laughs> no signs, no. Gravity doesn't have the pull it used to. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, mm -hmm. cosmology, or astrophysics? Stent had his response yet? No. No, no, no Dr. Becky in 2020 as well as 2019. Mm -hmm. 
Too we probably to made Dr. Becky more the most famous <laughs> <laughs> astrophysicist out there now. Maybe in our circle. Engineer. I don't think this channel with less than, what is it, seventeen less than 17,000 subscribers, she's probably got 20 times that on her own channel. Yeah, but we actually have real followers. Okay. Ah, real Cast, followers. Casting aspersions on her subscribers. <laughs> Can you explain what real followers, are they humans well, or what? Uh, well, see it like this. You know, when people follow you and listen in, that, yeah, if you have a million people that just tune in, they're like, oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. So smart. Yeah, they're not going to relay a lot of information. If you got people that are like, oh, I need to know this. I'm going to learn about this. I'm going to master this. And then I'm going to bother everyone in my social life about this. Yeah, those people are actually going to relay a lot of information and change everything around them eventually. First, bothering people, but eventually it will sink in gradually over time. So we have a lot of people that probably pay a lot of attention to the show, even though they might not speak up about it, that are just changing the world. I don't think a lot of Becky followers are doing the same thing. They're just like, oh, this is so awesome. She's so smart for saying that everything contradicts everything. It's brilliant. So what you're saying They're is not going to relay a lot of information. You're saying our subscribers are more open-minded, free-thinking, and therefore better. So the quality is better based on their cognition, according to you, right? Well, more effectively and influential. I think you're just biased, Darwin. No, I think he's I right. Think I think I every subscriber here is <laughs> you're right, amazing. But... What? I think every subscriber here is amazing, forward-thinking, bright individuals. Definitely. I think Arwen's absolutely correct. You're all ace. Everyone watching, you're all ace. Right. Everyone watching, the people in chat are not a proper reflection of what our audience is like. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are the reflection of what the audience is like. Oh, God. I think he was saying that our your audience, us included, disturb other people with information. That'll agree with. It's, I'll take my YouTube hat off. Yes, you're right. It's much better to have a far more focused and influential, as you put it, YouTube audience than it is to just have more people watching without my YouTube hat on. I put my YouTube hat on and go, subscribe today! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Any That's evidence funny. that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon with the youtube hat on or the other way <laughs> which one we're both on oh okay a youtube hat is a container too yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> now uh that was interesting is that an open Thanks container coming on. the yeah, gas the gradient is a guy is the, is the gradient guy here go on go on Ted. Yeah, it's the gradient guy here for the fourth day in a row. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, my. A couple of newbies, though. Might hear something from somebody. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Where were we? Any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? No. Black Swan came and said, where are thou now? And nowhere to be found. Oh, it's Arith. It's in the calculator. Art. Yes, it's the definitely in their calculator. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting to be reified. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at said centre of presupposed spherical Earth? <sighs> presupposed everything. Nice. They have nice they pictures want. of it, nice drawings, nice illustrations of it. Uh, just fiction. Yeah, I've got some. They run on this slide show that I've just made. This I don't know. That's going down with the audience, by the way. Hope you like the new slides. Some of them are thumbnails. Some of them are like memes that people have sent me using my face on various p different people's bodies and things like that. Or me skydiving, saying "Modus Tollens, bitches," things of that nature. I like right. that one. <laughs> yeah, that's my favourite. Modus Tollens, bitches. Yeah, shout out to people like Dank and uh, Hyena and various others, countless people who send me these memes, like the one on screen now. 
pre Quantum Eraser's Terminator, I might add. That's the original. That's the what is it? T eight hundred. Nathan, you're you're all the same model. One hundred and one. Well, that concludes housekeeping. Anyway, no molten iron core. We will see some nice pictures of it, though. They will float on by. I promise. Hmm. Hey, Orwin on his show, some somebody in chat they found the dolly with the braces clip. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. We've seen it. It's out there. Well, it yes exists. and no. Uh, well, I won't cut you off. You go ahead first. I'll save my criticism until you've told me what you tell me. <laughs> go ahead. So unless it in itself is a wonderful uh, CGI reversal, um, it has got the braces. Not, no, she hasn't. It's how she, I remember. Uh, okay. Not as big as I remember. But. It, it, I've, uh, Ranty shared with me several years ago a clip of this that was from a VHS cassette. So it's uploaded from someone who digitized a VHS cassette and put it on YouTube. So it's got all of the artifacts of the original VHS cassette, along with the horrible low resolution and crappy frame rate and all the rest of it. And when it was on pause, so he paused it when she's smiling, it looked like she had braces. And up until that point, I'd said, the only one I can't debunk of these Mandela effects is the, the, the braces, the James Bond one. Because, as far as I can tell, she had braces, I remember it. Like everybody else says they remember it, and she hasn't. So that's just weird. I've got no explanation for it. Other than if I can find some original VHS cassettes. Now, the thought was that there was two versions. You know, you're kind of almost buying into the Mandela nonsense when you do this. But you're like, okay, well, they filmed it twice then. There's maybe VHS cassettes out there. Or the TV release that people might have recorded that has a slightly different version for this very purpose. No. I think just the lower resolution of the cassette recording meant that when she smiles at the end, it looks like she's got braces. Looks like, hasn't, but looks certainly did look convincing to me when it was on mm. pause that it had braces. Now, I couldn't subsequently find that old VHS copy that had uploaded. I've looked, I just couldn't find it since. But, you know, hopefully if anyone speaks to Ranty, he'll remember that conversation of me showing him and going, ha, there you go. This is a video without her having braces. She hasn't got braces, but it looks like she's got braces. Therefore, there's then a, pre a plausible explanation for the confusion. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I've reasoned out that maybe that our, if that is the case and an artifact would have suggested this, then the, in the people's minds, they basically demanded that she had braces, even right. though in reality that was disputable. Correct. That's what in I think too. Most people watch that movie on TV. So. Right. But I, I don't know, though, because the, yeah, the video that somebody shared in my chat, it, it was pretty clear about it. So unless somebody CGI'd that in there, no. it's odd. It wasn't in there. That's the point. So the video wasn't was. a video of her with braces. That's my point. It was a video with, without. But when you pause it on her smiling, it looked like she had braces. It, the, but that's not the video I'm talking about. Somebody in my chat today shared a video with the braces. Okay. Very clearly. Okay. Mm. What What are the chances of your show having someone sh sharing a bit of information on this topic on the same day? Uh, I don't know. Everybody's talking about that shit. Yeah, Karen B was talking about it yesterday. Why? So, that's the because question, everybody's right? talking about it. About okay. braces? There you go. Should we talk about, about Siren? That scene in the Mandela effect. Should we talk about Siren Head for a bit then? As everyone's making CGI Siren Head videos. I don't know. Just a bit Should off topic. I, I don't mind indulging in a bit of Mandela debunking. You know, it was something I used to dabble in because it really frustrated me. It was one of the first things I came across as a non conspiracy person. So I'd studied, uh, I don't know if you call this conspiratorial, but subliminal messages. It's very well documented. It's, a, it's an art form. So I wouldn't call that conspiratorial psychopathy. And then came across Flat Earth. And at the same time, Mandela Effect. I'm like, why is this utter nonsense poisoning this subject, Flat Earth? 
along with, as I've progressed, a lot of other nonsense, I'll add, a huge amount of nonsense. Nevertheless, that was the nonsense that I came across when I came into the subject. I remember Jesse Spots babbling on about it and thinking, what a load of old crap. I'm going to debunk this. Not Flat Earth, the Mandela Effect. And I set about doing precisely that, picking them apart one by one. And like I say, the last one I got to was this James Bond one. But now you're saying this video is making the round where she actually has braces, which, yeah. okay, fine, show me and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have a well, look at it. It's on the screen, share now. It's on what? Oh, on screen, share, like I'm sharing screen. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there you go. It from it's rather just, than play uh, the clip. Just keep it on screen, I'll just make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Bear with me. <coughs> Good morning, people. Hey, how are you? Yeah, that's exactly what I remember, too. She hasn't got braces, has she? Let me just get closer to my screen. Hold on. Yes, she has. Yes. Really? We're doing Mandela? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, chocolate. I don't know how to add to this. No, no, it's just funny because I've been... It's just like... Why, don't why tell me. growing up again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she has. She's got braces in it. She has actually That's got braces right. on her teeth. I don't know. See? I don't know. There's a new product out called Bite. It's uh, transparent braces. Right. But but Nathan, I completely agree with you in general that most Mandela effect issues are caused by, I don't know, oddities in the design of the product that are made to be out of place, that are auto-corrected by the minds of people that in their minds just demand the more aesthetic version of it. And that's why Mandela affects always examples about things that are slightly out of place. Mm, and I maybe. think that they were always out of place. And it's just that people forgot that and they only remember the corrected version in their minds. Okay, the best dissection Negative. by far I've ever seen of Mandela effect, by far, was Paula's. So Bible literalist was a mm. fantastic breakdown of Mandela Effect. Now, I didn't know she dabbled in the subject at all. I came across her video, I think it was while she was actually live streaming it. I'm like, okay, I've got a moderate interest in this subject, moreover debunking it. So I'll, I'm intrigued to see what she had to say, knowing Baller. And from start to finish, she was, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely spot on in every single regard. She didn't get a single thing wrong. I agreed with her on everything, which is very unusual in any subject, especially something like Mandela, where there's a lot of, you know, differing opinions about what it even is but nevertheless uh, i'll recommend it again if i'm in the after show uncut and after show version i'll even share the link um it's a bit more difficult to dig out links if she's not in the chat unfortunately it's even if she was in the chat i can't click on the three dots anymore anyway i'll share it if i dig it out for the uncut and after show but bible literalist is the, is the youtube channel and uh, i can't remember the title of the video but it will have mandela effect in the title if you were to type those search those phrases into a search bar in YouTube, you would find the video by Bible Literalist about Mandela Effect. So I highly recommend it. Go and check it out. And shout out to I give you Life. Hold on one what? sec. Just one sec. Some cash for future braces and 5G distorts your vision of mental... Mental what? On teeth, by the way. Sorry, my kids' toys are in the way of the screen. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat, Rocky Life. Really appreciate it. I have memories of a personal example in which the Mandela effect was basically spotted by myself very, very early. And that is when I saw Star Wars 5. And talked about, I saw it on my own, completely alone. And then afterward, like within a day, I, I talked to my brother about it, who was, is older and a great Star Wars fan. And I told him, like, oh, that whole Luke, I am your father. And he immediately corrected me. Like, no, that's not what he says. Like, what? But he did say that. No, he says it, he says it separately. But he says no. the autocorrection in my mind immediately happened. And I already, still in the dream of, whoa, I saw this amazing thing, remembered it incorrectly. It had already autocorrected. And that was just one day. Right. Nah, it was Luke. <laughs> it father. Luke. No, it wasn't. It was Luke. Luke. Nah, sorry. I told he, you what happened. And he always had a silver. Was it was it for you? No. That's definitely what it was no. for me, bro. I don't know. No. You I can fight me all you want. You're not going to no. tell me what I remember. No. <laughs> it was Luke. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> hey, Nobody likes to hear. No. I am this your is, father. This Maybe is we should look into it further. 
Right, we've got the words research flat earth on screen and we're talking about bloody Star Wars and Mandela effect. I feel slightly sick. <laughs> oh, that's it's why the I was like, don't, don't, because some of these things, like, you're not going to tell me it was, it was no, I am your father. I understand some people remember that, but for me, absolutely not. It you're was Luke, I'm your father. Everything that I heard after that, it was that. It was always that. It was never no. Chocolate. I'm your father. Chocolate, Sorry. you're tricking and you're not going to tell me. Chocolates. Not... You did hear right. that. You literally did hear that. You just yeah, yeah. cut out the part that was in between. Because yeah, you yeah. literally heard that. There was just a part in between. And your mind closed that gap. Because yeah. it's like the perfect thing. Bro, yes. There, there's a dude on... <laughs> There's a dude on 24/7 uh, flat Earth Discord, 2.0, Maggie, and he's got a he's got the original toy, and the toy says it. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, that's right. Luke, I am your father. Yeah, the that's toy right. might say it. The toy <laughs> you know might why? Say it. Because the toy makers agreed they had the same effect. It's like, ah. yeah, it's gonna be All Luke, right, I bro. am your father. It's gonna All be right. that. <laughs> okay, well, say what you want, but it says it right there. He's played it on on a hangout. I've heard well, it, that, that, and that's what I remember. The toy, <laughs> the toy. They wanted it. Yeah, the toy. That's what you remember. That's the right. toy saying it, like if you had a C three PO with both. No, gold no, legs. I don't remember the toy. The toy I just heard because he just we were talking about it recently. I don't. I didn't have the toy. I don't remember the toy. I remember it in the movie. Yeah, well, it's a full I'm absolutely, it's I was absolutely in the movie. I understand. Star Look, I get that. This is why this is a weird subject because I get that people remember it another way. I do not. <laughs> Sorry, you're not going to tell me why I remember or why I don't. <laughs> like that shit was all over the place growing up. How are you going to tell me? Right? Yeah, and you're going to tell I'm... me what the 18 van was two tone with the red stripe? Nah, man. It was black and red. That's it. <laughs> you know, I can tell it was black so and gray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> there's what, a couple what? of these. You just, it's just, they're weird. What's the eighteen? So, Don't you mean the what you talking about? Phil? It was the eighteen then. <laughs> ruining my joke. The eighteen <laughs> was black and <laughs> red stripe. God damn it! <sighs> Wait, Sorry. how do you remember it, Arwen? The eighteen had a black fan with a red stripe on it. The it was 18. just black, right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure it's yeah, black and well, black and grey. So that not the Back to the Future. No, the seats were grey inside. Grey oh, I'm talking about the outside. No, nah, all black. Nathan, you remember it black and grey? No, no, no. Just, just, just grey leather interior, but the outside was just black with a red go faster stripe. Yeah, exactly. You check again. You got grey on it. Who are you? <laughs> Was it? No. You're lying. <laughs> well, dude, do I, I? Why would I lie about this? Show, show the, show it to me. I don't believe oh, you. Look, look it up. Put it. Yeah, I've just looked it up. It's, it's, no, not, uh, no, no, it's a I'm mixture not of both. Like, you're gonna Hello? have to show it in my face. Hello. Yeah, I've just looked it up. So it does have grey in it. I thought it did. So the top section of the van is like the windscreen and the top half of the bonnet, or what you guys call hood, is grey, along with the roof and the top part of the spoiler. The bottom half is black, and it's got a red stripe that separates the two. Oh, I remember it. It was all black. Yeah, that's what I got here on screen. Have a look what you've got. There's one. Lot <laughs> the first time I saw that gray shit out, I, I, one on the I left. almost dropped my, my, my phone. Like, there you go. what? Gray. <laughs> what is that? There you go. <laughs> Told not... you. Gray. What the fuck? Uh, that's, great. that's bananas, bro. That's wrong. <laughs> that's bananas. I don't that's remember not that. Screwing with us. I, I, See, yeah. we, no. So we can agree on that one. No. The, the, the loop. No. The, obviously, we're not going to agree. With. <laughs> no, I saw it driving away. That's not how it looked. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did they remaster now? this? Show? I know, Tev. I know, but. It's just, it is a little weird, this, this well, thing, Arwen, whatever no. it is. Totally, Arwen's got, no. They had Arwen's a dark got, van because it, Arwen they were Arwen's changed. totally triggered by this. Gray seats. That's what I remember. Okie doke. So it's we've had a bit of fun. <laughs> right. We're all a bit <gasps> drunk. Yeah, we can, we can move on now. No, there's Hannibal, look. It's grey. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what about the wheels? 
I, I don't know. I, I maybe don't know. maybe that's uh, Arwen's autocorrect and it's Gray's Anatomy. No, oh, I've seen that series like like five to ten times. No, on <laughs> many different streams. No, <laughs> no. <hear> that, no. <laughs> well, maybe I thought it was always like the reflection of the sky back. No, but the, no. Shut up, fool! That V eight. Shut up, fool! Shut up, fool! <laughs> anyway, fascinating. You 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 a Shut the hell up. <laughs> oh, I didn't say hell, by the way. But... So, m more interestingly, so, um, did you listen to, I know you did, but just to cue in the audience to what the subject change is going to be. Did you listen to Bev on the show the other day, Adam? Yes. Yeah. Slightly threw you under the bus, by the way. You know. I agree with Bev. I just can't validate what he says. That's... Mm -hmm. What? You can only validate it locally. Gives the ball as an excuse. James L. Jones himself, in an interview, uh, it, it's toys in the way, that he was surprised when he read the script that said, quote, Luke, I am your father. Now, I've read, I've seen lots of documentaries, Julio Pab, on, on uh, the Star Wars because of all the laser discs and uh, DVDs and stuff that I used to sell when I was in that particular trade. So all the different versions and all the different after what do they call them extras, the documentaries and all that crap. I've watched it all, and they explained that they wanted to keep that particular secret, that twist in the plot, very, very secret, to the point where they didn't even let the actors know they gave them different versions of the script to practice and then at the last minute released the actual version so that it didn't permeate through all the crew and really get you know out to the public before the film did so it was important to keep that particular plot twist under wraps so while yes james l jones might have well said that that isn't necessarily indicative that he, he actually said it in the movie and it's a mandela a true mandela effect no, I am your father, is the end piece of script that made it into the film. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is the piece of script that Mr. Jones actually learned before getting on set or before doing the voiceover, to be more accurate. But anyway, the point is, there was lots of different versions of that particular piece of text so that the secret was kept because nobody knew the plot twist. Nobody in the cast knew that that was the case. They didn't know that Darth Vader was his father, so they kept it under wraps so that the twist didn't reach the public. There you go. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. More importantly than anything, thank you, Julio. Really appreciate your support. Back to the soft subject at hand. So, uh, we've, uh, Bev sent me this message. I think he's trying to illustrate that Aaron Bur Burrell is a bit bitter. Because he says to Bev, I'm seriously thinking about having those videos removed based on your hateful attitude towards professional land surveyors. <laughs> okay, Mr. Salty. <laughs> what, Mr. Disco Ball? Mr. Salty Disco Ball? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Disco Ball is mad because you were talking about the Disco Ball Earth. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he's a bit salty. Uh, I guess that's too bad for him. The, the bit that I dropped in, Adam, was the end conclusion to our conversation when we discussed um, Bev in the kindest possible way without him there behind his back. And uh, we were saying that the, the, the way to confirm it and validate what he was saying was to force the line in the, in the same you know, in the same distance, whatever that distance may be in his level experiment with the water. If you force the line as well, then that would be what confirmed it. That's right, Nathan. I, th I totally agree. Well, thanks, Adam. I'm, I'm glad that we, you know, we're both of the same I'm mindset. Bloody on mute, aren't I again? Sorry. <laughs> I was saying. <laughs> exactly. It's you've got to force the line to validate it. It's um, logically sensible. You know it's correct, but actually to prove it, um, you've got to have a force the line because if not, then you have to take your measurement locally um, you can't validate taking multiple measurements at the lo at the locations 
um, that gives the ballers an excuse um, to say, no, it fits in my model as well. Um, but if you can force the line, then that proves the concept, but it is actually a requirement. Like I said, it, for me, you need a big, big uh, set square. <laughs> Is, is 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 the general way to actually physically prove it because you need something to prove that perpendicular yeah that's how it came up somebody on the discord panel said precisely that they said you need a set square i'm like well yeah that's precisely what you need and it's been attempted a couple of times by um the team of <laughs> it got dubbed i can't remember that who it was that did this now but somebody deemed what they were doing Gay watch. <laughs> if you type that in, you'll come to the to the rectilineator experiment. It was done by the concavers about four years ago, <laughs> and it's got the the Baywatch music dubbed over the top with these guys building a rectilineator, <laughs> which is just quite comical. <laughs> but there we go. It's very funny. Check it out. Um, but yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Basically, that is the correct method, as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's the it's the way that confirms it, even though you know. Logically, um, I think you could maybe use a laser, but that then starts to bring in all sorts of issues um, of complication and validation and arguments against. Um, but yeah, for me, big bloody ruler. You can, you can use a water level. <laughs> a water level to prove a water level. To Again, pull, that's to what I said. Partners. That's what I said. Horizontal. I, I just said exactly the same as Adam did, which is, hold on, is this being done on water? Yes, it is. Well, okay. <laughs> Doesn't the water itself do this? Can't use it to prove it, can you? Got to <clears throat> use a different method to prove that the water's level. That's what you're trying to do, even though you know it is. You're trying to demonstrate it is. Uh, how how do you build a bridge? Depends on the bridge. Sometimes you might use stone. a bridge over water. A bridge over water. You measure from the water level in one of the ends up, and on the other on the other side you measure from the water level up. It's from the water level example. up. Ruler. You'll see the complication about it. It's, it's a great example of a big ruler. What we're saying. Yeah, but they that take Earth's curvature into effect. The point. They take Earth curve into effect when they make those big bridges, so it's like a big bent ruler in their mind. Well, well, they can't because there is the uh, the uh, uh, plumb lines. If you have the plumb lines on the uh, horizontal um, plane. Um, the squares need to be perfect. The square angle, yeah, when they where the two lines meet up, it needs to be perfect angles. Yeah, which is why. If and you they are. Go to like the Humber Bridge. They'll show you the mathematics that shows that those two plums are dead plum relative to their own location, but there is a differential in the. Uh, whole uh, differences at the top and the bottom of about three inches it's the humber bridge i don't think anybody's ever measured it but they, that's what they claim and that's the point it's a demonstration of either claim isn't it they can say they've got numbers to show it look this it's three inches wider at the top between the two poles than it is at the bottom well i, I disagree because from right, but... the water uh, level, uh, all the pillars of the bridge will be completely plumb. They will be in perfect perpendicular uh, to the horizontal line. Okay, so uh, and and were, there is no bones. Sorry. They all have perfect angles. They're all plumb. If they were a mile, a, a kilometre apart, and we'd be trying to measure... Uh, difference of plumb from the one to the other of 0 0.00899 degrees. Um, such a minute amount. 
So how would you take that two images and demonstrate that there is no differential of that amount between the two poles? That's what they're claiming. Yes, I understand that. But um, uh, f from point A to point B on the horizontal uh, waterline, uh, any pillars that you place in the center uh, to support the bridge, to support anything, they are all uh, plumbed and they are per perpendicular to, uh, to the horizontal line. None of them shows any, any drop. If you measure the, the, uh, the top of the pillars compared with the bottom of the pillars measured, uh, they are the same distance apart. So uh, it, it, I think it's, a, um, it's more complicated to assume that there is a, a bulge than to face the fact that it is actually plain. You have to take into account the um, margin of error of your equipment. So if you were to drop a plumb line just in your house, could you get it to an accuracy of 0 0.00892192161 degrees? Now, the differential across a kilometre is that amount. So what I'm saying is, it's hard enough to actually get to that level of accuracy with equipment anyway, yeah? To that margin of error, to then demonstrate that differential across a kilometre, how do you demonstrate that differential? So the equipment's margin of error, I would suggest, is when you take the two and then you've got to somehow take a Muppet view image to demonstrate it, it makes it difficult to actually prove the point that there is that differential or not. The thing is, isn't it? You need to use Muppet vision in order to come to that conclusion. Otherwise, a straight line, you cannot bend it. It's a straight line. A plumb is a plumb. If you, if you hang anything on a line uh, heavy enough uh, not, not to bounce, you'll have a perfect uh, plumb line. Lovely. And we will call that plumb perfect. And now let's go a kilometre away. We've got our other perfect plumb. Now, how are you going to compare the two and show that there isn't a difference of 0 0.008992161 degrees between the two? Well, what I do is, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I, uh, I explained yesterday my, uh, my method, which is easy. I wouldn't say my method, but uh, it's what we normally use, which is a, a uh, water level. So um, the premises is you have a, um, a, uh, a hose pipe. It's a see-through, a clear pipe. Um, you run water into the pipe. You need to make sure that there is no... no uh, bubbles inside no no air uh, normally we use a, a bucket with water so you put a bucket with water on a, a high elevation uh, with a tip inside and from the other end you place some suction and you have the water f flowing so once the water is uh, is running and it's clear you lift both ends of the pipe hose up and that water is in a perfect level so once you start taking levels um, and uh, you can, pl can place the uh, both ends of the uh, water hose um, and level them and then you can do another measurement further up and you can multiply these measurements and, and then you'll take your plumb lines to that line and will be completely per perpendicular along the line. Okay, and how are you going to draw those, join those two lines up to show that they're both perpendicular to each other? All of will say that equidistant from an imaginary central point, and that's the same effect that you're demonstrating for them. You've got to demonstrate that those perpendiculars join exactly, and not the variance. There you go. And that's such a small variance. Let's say that let's let's say that you are contracted to uh, put light poles on a very long road, okay? And you want the poles to be all at the same height. So you know the height of the poles. You uh, you know how much deep you want to put them down. 
But if you want to bring them to, to a, a level, what you have to do is you need to, um, to uh, level both of the ends, again, with the water level and the hose, the hose pipe, you can level both ends. And once that you have both ends leveled, yeah, you put a straight line, which is a string from one end to the other, and all the other poles will come to the same level. And trust me, they all be at the same level, yeah, and they all will be plumbed. And once you do, do that task, you move forward and you can have another 100, 200, 500 poles done exactly the same way. And they're all perpendicular to the level, which is uh, the point of reference to start with. And how do you prove that? Nathan, I got four pictures in Master B that might help. I, I, I think I just explained. I think is uh, anyone can visualize this. I can, I, I can I'm do not, the, exper not, the experiment myself if you want to call it an experiment. I'm saying, how do you prove it? I, I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh, what I'm saying is, there's not a way to prove it. That's my point of conjecture. Not that it's not level. I, I agree, it is. I'm saying, how do you prove that? Other than saying logically. It is, it is. We know it is, but how do you actually demonstrate it and prove it? I think I just did. I mean, um, okay, if, you, if you would do su su such a, um, a uh, uh, job, let's say, n no one can say that that is curving, ever. They can, obviously, mm -hmm. with the perspective, with the distance, they, they will look like they, they are disappearing in the... Uh, in the distance, but the, again, this is uh, angular size. It has nothing to do with the level. Um, if if you come to every single pole and you look at them, they are all the same size, at, at the same height, N not at the same length, because some might be deeper on the ground, or some of be my uh, uh, loose on the ground. Maybe some you'll have to extend them somehow in order for them all to be at the same level height. The same way you do bridges, the same way you do anything else. If you want it in the level, it's the easiest job ever, is to put something level, horizontal. Uh, I don't, I don't understand the That's not what he this. asked you. That's not what he asked you. He said to prove it. You keep on going on with the same story. We all know level's flat. My word. So there He you asked go. you to prove it. If you, you're not going to be able to do it, right? We just know that level's flat. End of discussion, right? Indeed, agreed. Yeah. We're, we're, you want to talk about it for another three hours? That level's flat? Uh, I'm game. Go ahead. Well, before you do... No, thank you. I was going to say 10th man. I'll put what you've asked me to pop up on screen. So, I don't know what yeah. it is, though. It just looks like... A like some sort of quarry or something. There's four pictures. Uh, okay. Three of which I believe is Lake Mead. And the water line has gone down. And you could see where the water line was for a while when water was plentiful. And it's left the mark on the rocks. Pretty level. So... Can you prove that where you're stood there, starting at the waterline, a mile across the other side, can you prove if you draw a perpendicular that that waterline over the, a mile away is not eight inches lower? I haven't gone there to do it, but what I'm trying to say is what QE just said. We all know level is yeah. flat and level is a straight line over horizontal. And here's physical evidence that proves that when the water was that high and then when it went below that height, it left the mark for us. Physical evidence. I don't see a curve, do you? That's a big no. How can yeah, they you, say there you, is a bulge? It's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, there is no bulge anyway. I don't know where the bulge came in. Um, 
But you're looking at that. You can see the angular size on that picture you just pulled off. You can see the, how the angular size changed. So you're just looking, right? <laughs> looking is not going to, uh, you know, prove it. How would you prove it? Like from where this guy's standing on, on one edge, you'd have to stretch a line, right? Well, yeah, a giant set square. Yeah. That's the only way you could do it. Let's How just, long this let's line just go to be? flat and then move on to, you know, some cheeseburgers. <laughs> you buying? Nathan's buying. <laughs> You're buying? Because <laughs> Nathan's buying. Because I'm a patty short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So who can summarize? You, oh, oh, Rumpus, you put a theodolite, right? The theodolites take in um, angular size change. You twat. Mr. Second Law of Thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth. You think we're going to trust you with anything other than, other than a gumdrop wrapper? Probably not. Thanks. I don't think a theodolite would be any good for that kind of large difference distances because you are getting the compression um within the e equipment aren't you so but to summarize for me nathan you'd have to be where you are drop your plumb and take your big set square all the way across that water level to see that it was would be eight inches lower the water line on the other side the far end with your big mile long set square and that would then Prove it for me. That would be proof. Be a clear demonstration, a physical demonstration. You've got your perpendicular, got your, your, your plumb, and you actually take it out to the point to measure. You have well, we the got his brother in here. That. You have the horizontal line and the plumb line of the pillars oh, of the here platform. Here we go again. <laughs> We got his brother in here. Closed thermos is an open system. You two should get a room. Get married. Your kids would have hooves. Well, then, well, then the closed thermos be an isolated system? No. No. According to Zanuck, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there are no isolated systems. No, I know that. I'm just saying in their in their double speak though. Oh, in their double speak. You can have all sorts of crazy contradictions in their double speak. You can have almost open, mostly closed, things like that. <laughs> you can have gas giants in a vacuum. Is it well, good for, for food? For <laughs> 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 Well, we could arrange a meetup. Boom, boom. No, we couldn't. We're all on lockdown. <laughs> well, according to uh, them, we actually go to a place called outer space. So, when, when for heat and matter to get through whatever system you're in, what would that have to be for that to even be possible? It would have oh to be an God. open system. You said it again. He says, he says, you don't understand Earth is not an isolated system. Therefore, the second law doesn't apply. <laughs> wow. Rumpus, man. Come on the show. Make that day. Just a couple of quick shout outs. So shout out to Cleary. He says, I remember your name as being Ethan Woodley. Strange. Must be a Mandela effect, Cleary. Thank you very much for the super chat. <laughs> yeah, we, we spoke to Zanuck about this and charged him with correcting Rumpus on his complete nonsense and where the misapprehension came. So because the second law of thermodynamics is described with an isolated system, they feel that it doesn't apply to the Earth. However, in demonstration to Zanuck, the guy showed how the second law of thermodynamics works, showed an increase in entropy in a closed system, definitely not an isolated system. And he was demonstrating how it applies. So it equally applies to open and closed systems as demonstrated. He also thought that that was an isolated system too. 
Yeah, that's it's just a, a way of weaseling out. It's it's a way of opting out of a, a law of nature and saying it's not applicable to their model. They believe their model is Earth, and it's not. It's just a model. But their model violates the second law of thermodynamics. We didn't ever live on the model anyway. It doesn't matter that their model doesn't work. That isn't the world. Now, the fact that it doesn't work with their model means they will over and over and again assert that the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to their model. They'll say the Earth because they think their model is the Earth. It isn't. But that's what they'll say. Second law doesn't apply to the Earth. It does. It's a natural law. It's a law of nature. It applies to the Earth. It doesn't work in their model of a sphere Earth. That's all that means. Nathan, when you say Earth or nature, what are you, what are you implying? Like the environment we live in? Is that what you're implying? Yeah, that's what laws of nature apply to. Nature, shockingly. <laughs> You know they're going to obfuscate even the word nature. They've done that before, so that's why I'm trying to be clear about it. Yeah, where we live and breathe, that would be nature. Everyone got suckered into the chat now, I take it. Make some space for them if, I don't know if Righteous is around. Clear out some of the non-speaking oh, participants. God. Involved in an online battle. Serious. A I battle. The um, rumpus was incapable of learning anything, but it appears not. Um, early on, he he started self muting with multiple stars, but realised the chat bot is wise to that, so he switched to pluses. Brilliant rumpus. Swear with pluses. That, I, I'm not following that. I don't understand what that really means. So. His messages were getting held for the review when he was twatting with asterisks, but now he bots with pluses. His messages aren't being held for review, so I ain't got to click on. So that still not make sense. No, that makes sense now. <laughs> so Five Angel says, paying for... Uh, paying you now before Facebook and YouTube ban anti-hoaxers, anti-vaxxers, and flat earthers. Mm, I'm not too concerned, given the type of content that we produce here. You know, we're not what would be deemed by you know the MI5 or whatever it is description of what do they call it in the state CIA description of um, conspiracy theorists. But that's not really what we do here. So we're not your typical flat earthers. Or at least that's my opinion. I mean, if you can find something in the material that's outrageously conspiratorial and subjective and uh, not subjective, opinionated, then fine, you know, point it out to me. But typically, I don't think that's what we do here. So, Trying to claim the 18 band's got grey on it. That's pretty outrageous, I found. But... Yeah, talking about the Mandela <laughs> effect is, is something that's very much mainstream, though. You know, I've seen the angry video game nerd with however many million, million subscribers going through the Mandela effect. So, I'm, again, I'm not too concerned about that either, really. That's where I first heard about it. Angry Video yeah. Game Nerd. Yeah. I mean, he's only covered it in the last couple of years. Probably even less than that, maybe last year. But, yeah, it's, it's been, been around Reason. a long time. I, I just strike it up as something a little weird. I don't, I don't lose my mind about it. <laughs> you know, like... Arwen will tell me it, it is one way. I get it. I get you remember it another way, but that's why it's weird. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Plus, when, when but, well, you don't. I was just going to say, when something conspiratorial does come up, there's often both sides of the argument, non-conspiratorial and the conspiratorial side, thrashed out. So with the most recent example of it, people are censoring their own speech over this, often because they're spouting complete nonsense about 5G and what they believe it does, and describing about how the frequencies work. Now, on this show, we talk about light not being a wave, and that seems to have just been completely forgotten by a lot of people. But there we go. It's, it's an interesting subject that had both sides heard, and I'm not in the slightest bit concerned that that video, I don't think it even got demonetized. 
it's perfectly acceptable as far as YouTube standards are concerned. And it's being acutely aware of the YouTube standards that keeps you in monetization and not having your videos removed and all that kind of stuff. Just, just be aware of the rules. Some of them you might not like, but if you just go, I don't like that rule, I've therefore I'll flaunt it completely. Well, mm, that might get your channel shut down. Well, the Mandela effect is not real, but you can think of it as real. No, no, the Mandela effect is real. The Mandela effect is describing like false memories that people have. That is the effect. But the assertions that are made thereafter, that we are in a parallel universe... No, that's the bit that's nonsense. Yeah, that's I where... Into all of that. I, 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 don't, I don't put cause on this. <laughs> I, I accept that this is something weird that's happening, and... I don't know the cause of it, <laughs> but yeah, it does. It it is a real thing. Like there are people that remember things differently than other people. That's the effect. How did I just bomb a George? Sharon is opening up the bottomless pit. Huh? You say Neil? They say that Cern is opening up the bottomless pit, and that's why there's this Mandela effect. But he does say no. <laughs> right, no, that's true. No, 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 that's correct. They do say that. That is right. They do say that. I'm not obviously agreeing well, with that, but that when I first came across yeah. this subject, Mandela Effect, yeah, they were talking about CERN creating parallel dimensions and opening the black hole to hell or whatever. You know, there was all sorts well, of crap. That, that I've heard before, yeah, but I never actually heard the tie-in to Mandela with CERN. Because CERN has its own problems with <laughs> fucking... Uh, conspiracy theories of or what the hell they're doing there so that's a whole other animal i'll, I'll tell you when this is going to get really weird when nelson mandela dies when he actually dies or when, when he, he dies, dies mate, people are going to freak out no no what would be more again. weird is when he <laughs> dies but by coincidence he was out and about during the corona lockdown and happens to be in jail and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Right, shout out to, is it Unitox Femi? He says, any proof rumpus don't know something of everything. Uh, great sentence. Thank you very much for the super chat, Unitox Femi. And I think he means any proof rumpus doesn't know something of everything, perhaps. Thank you for the super chat. Well, Rumpus is here, but uh, maybe in the after show. Uh, yeah. Wrong with this show. Got a couple of minutes it's left. It's almost over. Huh. Almost over. Yes, it was that stimulating flat and level and plumb lines that, that takes up most of your time. <laughs> now you can start with that. <laughs> It's better than Nathan. What about the gradient? <laughs> gradient. Gradient, Nathan. So has uh, uh, Zanuck had a word with you yet, Rumpus? Set you straight? Oh, I can talk now, can I, at last? I was completely correct and have been completely correct in everything I say because everything I say, it's rule of the internet. I'm always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I am all right. Yo, me wow. out of the gate with certain nonsense, bet. man. <laughs> you are. I have a certain bet for being right every time. And with that, I'll say if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. Of course, a massive thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Collective IQ of a root vegetable, you lot. Have we ever leveled for Rumpus?
I don't think he's... I have. Level is flat and straight. No curve. Oh, if I had a curve, my you. fucking tire would break. Oh, God. I a curved tire. Who knows? Level. Level. Orientation perpendicular to plumb. It can be curved. Oh, oh double. Nice. Oh. Exactly correct. Well, Zanuck, you going to teach that freaking Dunning Kruger the 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 clown brother of yours? <laughs> got the Wonder <laughs> Twin powers. Wonder Twin powers, activate. <laughs> <laughs> I could show you a diagram that would explain this, but unfortunately, this uh, this terrible platform you're using makes that impossible. Diagrams don't explain anything; they don't have a voice. Yes, Rumpus reification fallacy. So you've never you used mom. a diagram. I know you. Uh, like we've never been able to explain anything. And if you were second law, thermodynamics you, doesn't you apply to that. What's delta no G? Is that a disco band from the seventies? I missed. What was that? Start you bonehead. Say again. You delusional Dunning Kruger numpty dipshit. That's you what you are. are. The ultimate Dunning Kruger. That's what you Everything are. And you I've say, proven it over. Bunks. I've proven it no, the you, first you, week I was out here. You hide. I run that you hide in your little bunker. Away I should run that. Hide. I don't. I was out here for and two and a half years, away, dragging no you around by your freaking bunker, short hairs, along with you and Jim Panda, the freaking moron ad blogger, her water, all you dumb shit. Go back to erectile dysfunction 2.0 and start up a show with five people watching, with all your watch pages open. You friggin' idiot. You should be institutionalized. You, you delusional twat. And you've got Dunning Kruger to such a level and a way you can get up and Your morning. sister. You, you don't even know the difference between entropy and the second law thermodynamics. Yeah, you don't you even know, know the difference. Second law doesn't apply to the <laughs> earth. You're an utter moron. Air is not the atmosphere. You don't even know the difference Air is between not the, the atmosphere. second law and entropy. Air is not the atmosphere. Entropy is not the atmosphere. The earth because Wiki said that it was isolated systems only. You don't even understand that. The, do you think the earth is What's Delta G? Hold on. Hold on. Do you What's think Delta the earth G? is an isolated system, QE? Air is not the QE, atmosphere. Do you think the earth is an isolated system? Air is not the atmosphere. QE, do you think the earth is an isolated head. system? Do you the body think it's an isolated system? <laughs> Rampus, how many microstates does this oh, guy yeah, contain? Let's, let's, let's cue an answer. I know he knows to hide. He, he always dodges these questions. Rumpus, Rumpus, Rumpus. Hold on, let's QE, Rumpus, let's QE Rumpus, talk. Rumpus, let's Rumpus. let QE talk. Scientifically, Rumpus, let, let's QE QE talk. Is a closed let's don't system. protect him, people. I know you want to protect him. I know you want to protect him. <laughs> protect QE? Let's let him talk. Oh, talk. protect me! I'm let's quivering in my bones. Whether the Earth is an isolated system or not. Head. You need to be... You're okay. retarded, dude. You can do it. Everyone knows it. Yeah, go answer the question. It's not like you're hiding. Stop dodging the question, QE. Everyone dodging can see the you're question. dodging the question. Is the Earth Rump an isolated Rump system? Rumpus. Oh. Rumpus. No, hold on. Let QE talk. I have an, I I have an entropy question Scientific for Rumpus. Please, yeah. I know you want to system. protect QE. He doesn't think oh, entropy and the second law are the same. I know you say. want to protect him. That's what they say. I'm, I'm curious, who, who's the bigger master in entropy? Is it Zanuck or Rumpus? Stop holding his hand, Who's the bigger? Rumpus. Do they shoot the rockets through Stop holding space. his hand and protecting him. He's got to be exposed to scrutiny once or twice in his life. And I want to know Rumpus. if he thinks Rumpus. that the Earth's Rumpus. Rumpus. Stop Rumpus. interrupting. Rumpus. Rumpus. Let How many micro places does that contain? Let QE speak. speak. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let QE speak. Rumpus, can you stop causing a disturbance, please? I'm not protecting anyone. I'm just. Rumpus. Let Rumpus. Speak. Rumpus, if you don't shut let up, I'll remove you. Saying let somebody speak 50 times in my hangout is not tolerated. If you keep doing it, you won't take part in the conversation. Saying the same thing over and over again will not stand here. Do you understand or not? Hey, but I wish people would stop interrupting, then you could hear me speak. Yeah, I run the show. I'll make that clear as well. I'll do that bit, Rumpus. You're merely a participant. I will run the okay. show. Okay, could you ask QE to answer my question, please? You've asked him. He can choose whether or not he answers. That's not my bag. I don't tell him what to do. Okay, well, I think that should expose everyone why the reason why he never comes out for debates with me or people like me. because That's a lie. Let's shut Rumpus up and just point out how Rumpus is lying. Rumpus, before Quantum Eraser even had his own channel, he came on to, I don't know which channel it was, I believe it was Erectile Dysfunction, where you used to hang around all the time with Paper Explanator as the moderator on a channel that was not his. So that is an outright lie.
So he's put himself on server mute because he doesn't want to listen to me pointing out that he's a liar. So while he's on server mute, for the audience's benefit only, because Rumpus doesn't want to hear it, that was a lie. A full-on, outright, downright lie. Rumpus is a liar. Yeah, wasn't he at one time QE ganged up on by all of these just guys? Like, these it's, he, hold on, just while he sticks his head in the sand, I'd like to ask a favour of somebody who's in the uh, Discord chat. Can someone type out a message, address it to Rumpus, and point out that what's going on now, verbally, is that I'm pointing out how he's a liar. A disgusting liar. He's just lied about about Quantum Eraser and his failure to inhabit other non-platforms that aren't his. That's a lie. He personally has engaged Quantum Eraser the first week he was out here on this subject on a platform he did not own. That was definitely not a friendly platform. The moderator was a globehead. So he's a liar. And rather than listen to that, he's stuck himself on server mute. So no, doesn't want to listen to the being pointed out that he's a liar, doesn't get an opportunity to respond to his accusations of being a downright liar with the demonstration of his lie. It's proof of his absolute disgusting nature. These people are all liars. Furthermore, he's clearly not been corrected by Zanuck yet. Z Zanuck's failed to correct his comrade in this argument in regards to his misapprehensions about the entropy law, also known as the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics is the entropy law. They are one and the same thing. Now, Rumpus's pathetic little attempt to ask us if Earth is an isolated system when no isolated systems exist in nature would be to make an assertion that the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the Earth, even though in demonstration to Zanuck when he was charged with correcting Rumpus on his complete ignorance of this subject, that we had a demonstration of the second law of thermodynamics with an entropy increase in a closed system. So the second law of thermodynamics does not only apply to isolated systems as it's being used in its simplified form to describe the law. That would be farcical. But based on Rumpus's total ignorance and Zanuck's failure to correct him after agreeing with us and us recording him agreeing with us and him agreeing to correct the misapprehensions and stupidity of his comrade Rumpus, who is still here chanting away, demanding that he's got control of the show whilst interrupting everything that everybody says to get an answer about whether or not an isolated system exists when none exists in nature. Something that's made clear if he had a clue about the second law of thermodynamics, which he doesn't. He thinks it doesn't apply to Earth when it's a natural law derived from and applicable to nature. So he's a moron. And he doesn't want to hear that. He's not going to tolerate being told just how stupid he is. But his comrade will sit making a hell of a lot of background noise while I point out stupid rumpuses. And you definitely don't want to listen to him if you're a globehead. You know, you obviously would be preferring to listen to Zanuck making a load of background noise while I'm pointing out just how stupid this idiot is who thinks the second law of thermodynamics and entropy are different things. Now, clearly, Rumpus isn't going to listen to this kind of abuse of his stupidity. He's a coward. That's why he's on server mute. And that's why he's got his buddy making loads of background noise while I point out just a massive coward. That's all he is. Came here, lied, got called on it, went on server mute. So he doesn't have to listen to me telling everybody just how big a liar he is and how big a fraud he is. Because he's claiming something's different to something else that is describing the same thing. Fundamentally incorrect so that he can get around his model's failure when it doesn't apply this law of nature to his model therefore not correlating with reality because it would have to obey this natural law so yeah rumpus is a complete fool anybody who listens to anything he has to say will be as stupid as he that's a fact didn't manage to have a word with him then zanuck I charged you with correcting his stupidity and he's just come here and parroted the same exact nonsense that the second law doesn't apply to the earth even though it's a law of nature applicable always derived from nature applicable to the earth he seems to think the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the earth because it doesn't apply to anything beyond an isolated system which doesn't exist have you not had an opportunity to correct him on this Sanic? surely you've been hanging around in various different places with him no I haven't Hanging around with Rumpus, we've talked occasionally, we talk, usually talk with everyone witnessing the discussions. But the second law applies to everything. We know that, but he was speaking of the, the Earth being a closed or an open system and how it would apply. It has to apply to an isolated system overall. 
There are no isolated systems. That's double speak. You've said Earth is both open and closed in one sentence, and then Absolutely. described how isolated systems are where this is applicable when we showed you it being applied to a closed system, Zanik. So this is fundamentalist religious double speak where you've just described Earth as both open and closed in one breath. Depends how how you want to class. No, it fucking doesn't. It doesn't depend. That's just the problem with your model. It requires you have a variance in the open or closed nature of the system that you're talking about. It doesn't vary in reality. It's either open or closed. It's very binary in that regard. So this double speak about your model being mm, sometimes open, sometimes closed, kind of a bit open. It's just religious double speak. <laughs> no, it's it's some it's considered a no, you don't have systems being considered really? anything. They're either open or closed. It's binary. It's either one or the other. It's not kind of anything. Well, no. For all practical purposes, for measurement, they say it's a closed system. No, they don't. So you don't know your own religion. So, Zanik, I'm going to have to tell you off. You don't know your own religion. They claim Earth is an open system. You've got little rockets flying out to Mars, you spastic. You think they say that's closed? How the hell did the rockets get to Mars if you're under the apprehension, incorrectly, that the heliocentric bullshit world of Sphere is a closed system, you dumbo? No, because for all practical purposes... No, not practical purposes. For practical purposes, fucking rockets, mate. They claim oh. Earth is an open system next to a vacuum with rockets leaving it. That's very much an open system. So not for all intents and purposes closed. You just don't understand your own bullshit religion of the Earth, a pressurised system, in a vacuum, with rockets leaving it! That's open, Dumbo! The small amount of matter does technically classify it as open, but... So it's fucking open then, not closed, as you declared with your fundamentalist religious double-speak of nonsense that doesn't make sense, and describe systems that are binary as either open or closed, as depending on the circumstances, and ultimately described by you incorrectly as closed? No, you just stupid, Zanik. Not closed. Your religion of a globe Earth at pressure in a vacuum is open, you fucking retard. Technically? Not technically. Not in certain <laughs> circumstances. Not under certain situations. It's binary, you fool. You don't understand this. You're stupid has to meet their bullshit no so yeah your religion doesn't pe work people people went to the moon right like that that would have to be open i, I don't understand why you're making this so hard for yourself i don't get it maybe zanuck thinks that only above cape canaveral it's open and everything like else is closed yeah, exactly. That's exactly like right. Voyager out it's there, right? In your story. Maybe it's got doors. I wonder if there's doors up there. Well, like in Spaceballs, where they have a closed system, like Zanik described <laughs> incorrectly about his model, then they have a little hatch that they put Mega Maid over the sky vacuum. The sky vacuum. <laughs> I mean, tell me you think that's what it is, Zanik. Like, what, how do you figure this for practical purpose? First of all, is sending rockets out there is that practical or not practical? I don't understand. Okay, let me explain. So, when so little matter is exchanged from the Earth, they call that open. But because it's so little, it's technically considered... No, 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 no. Define no. open system. Open is where matter and energy can be exchanged. Oh, right. So, we're definitely in agreement then. It's definitely open in your religious belief. Matter and energy both being exchanged. Rockets being matter. Definitely leaving. So, definitely open. You're definitely wrong when you said it was closed. Not for all intents and purposes. Not for descriptive purposes. But in your religion of a pressurised sphere earth with gas pressure clinging into the outside even though it's hurling through a vacuum that nonsense bullshit violation of the second law of thermodynamics that religious belief you have about a ball earth that bullshit is open you said it's closed you're just wrong and stupid define no, a closed system in physics in physics they determined that the earth could be closed because so little define matter is a closed clean. system yeah science didn't define earth as being closed Rockets leave it, that's matter, therefore open in your bullshit world of pressurised sphere Earth in a vacuum with gas not expanding to fill the volume in violation of the second law of thermodynamics. It's open in your religion, Zanik. This...
At least say that. Nathan's right. Saying your belief, what? it's open. It's not a belief. Oh, a we I all understand that there second. are... Shut up. One second. Define a closed system. Talk over me. Define Listen. a closed system, please. Er a closed system is where matter is not exchanged, only energy. Oh, right. Well, there rockets you are... go. You're done. So it's definitely not <laughs> closed you. then. Rockets are escaping acclaimed rockets leaving this pressurized system with the gas not expanding into the vacuum, but rockets capable of going into the vacuum. That's definitely not closed in your religious belief of a second law of thermodynamics violation that is Earth at pressure, not filling the vacuum, but rockets can still go to it. Yeah, that's open, mate. Because there's Uncle Mick yeah. rockets. Zanic, are, are rockets what about matter? The sun's energy? Don't that come through it? Uh, are rockets matter, Zanik? Matter, yeah, they, they are. are matter. So little matter is exchanged, they consider it a close. But it's, but it's no still matter, matter right? But it's you don't, still you matter. don't get to consider this. This isn't yeah. the, this isn't the not really is level that we're working at. Your considerations when we talk about natural law are so inconsequential, it's not even worth talking about. What you consider the system is irrelevant when it's binary, either one or the other. You can't be a little bit pregnant. This is the same. One or the other, open or closed. Notice I'm not saying or isolated. Like when I told they told you, Neil Armstrong that he was going to the moon, did they tell him, like, you're, you're very insignificant, so we can just send you up there? Is that is that what they did? Because, you know, they, exactly they, the in same. their story, they so sent people matter, to the moon, right, Zanuck? Zan so Zan little matter Zan is exchanged, they consider it to be Zan a Do people system. count as matter? Pardon me? Was Neil, is Neil Armstrong matter? Yes, he was matter. Yeah, so it would be open in their right. claim of a sky Thanks. vacuum that they can go through to get to the moon. So in their religious nonsense, where the gas doesn't escape, but they can... That would be open. I mean, that's why it violates the second law of thermodynamics, because an open system would be free for the gas to fill the available volume as per natural law. But unfortunately, the gas in your system still remains at pressure without any containment. So little containment that, according to the same religion, rockets can go into the sky vacuum freely. But the gas doesn't. Hence, it violates natural law. It doesn't mean that you can come here and just bullshit and lie about it being considered as closed. It isn't ever considered as closed because it's a binary description of what it is or is not. In this case, open, but as a consequence, violating natural law. The sphere Earth at pressure violates natural law because the gas we breathe would fill the space if there was a space for rockets to go to. No, I said that so little mass is exchanged that it's consistent. Mass is exchanged, therefore open. End of story. Therefore open. Exactly, then it's open. Yeah, end of story, Zanik. So little matter is exchanged. I couldn't give a shit what you think is so little. It would be all of it. If there was a vacuum of the sky, then all of the gas would vacate and fill that space, as per natural law. That's what gas does. Can I ask so Zanuck a question about system, tires? But you could think of it as a closed system. I'm not going to be thinking of it as anything. It's, it's definitely not open, as per their religion. And their religion is definitely not closed, as per Zanuck's bullshit. We definitely have gas pressure. Therefore, we'd require containment to have gas pressure. Their system doesn't have containment. Despite the fact that Zanuck, in his fantasy, is going to consider it as closed, despite the fact that it's an open system, at pressure violating natural law with rockets going into the vacuum freely now all that that really means is we haven't got rockets going to space that's all lies we haven't got space if we did the gas would fill it so sphere earth at pressure violates natural law therefore isn't real it's just that simple his consideration that it's closed because they need gas to stay here doesn't mean that their religion is closed it needs to be closed because we've got gas pressure, but their religion is open with rockets leaving it. Simple. Does a leaky tire yeah, an open or closed simple. system? Open. Pardon? Is a leaky say? tire open or closed system? It, that'd be open. 
Tell me, tell me the uh, scope of the of the system. Is it the tire only, or with outside of the tire? It's whether or not it exchanges merely energy or matter and energy. That's how you define open and closed. Now, in this example that Paul's given you with we'll a tire exchanging tire. matter, in this case, he air, and he talks through me because he's a fundamentalist religious zealot that needs to obfuscate this very concise description of open and closed. Now, in the case of the tire that's being described, we've got matter escaping. Therefore, it's open. If the matter wasn't escaping, it'd be closed. Does a tire always keep 100% of its air? No, no, it loses it. So you could consider it as okay, an open so system. Is, so it's an open system? Yeah, you can consider it open. Okay, so does the second law apply to, the, to an open system? Absolutely. Okay, tell me how it applies to the system. Entropy will increase. The gas the will fill the space. That's how entropy works. The entropy increase will be that occasionally a molecule of gas will hit somewhere that it can escape through. A hole. Somewhere that it's not sealed. So instead of bouncing off rubber... It bounces off a bit of metal and then works its way out to the open environment that it can fill. Now, the entropy increase would be precisely that, the gas filling the space. That's entropy, the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, everything around it is wrong. He's just talking through me, isn't he, in Discord? He's not listening to me. I'm giving him a concise answer that describes what's happening in that open system and why entropy increase is occurring. And all he's doing is talking through me so Discord can't hear me. Just for the audience's benefit, he's not listening anymore. He's asked me a question. I'm giving him an answer. He's simply refusing to listen because it demolishes his sky vacuum belief of a globe Earth at pressure in a sky vacuum where entropy would increase in the same way it increases with this tyre. The tyre pressure eventually escapes because it's having an entropy increase demonstrated in my example that he doesn't want to listen to. That would be the same as the sky. The gas would fill the space. Eventually, it would all leak out. Not just eventually either, because there's no barrier. There's no little gap, like with this tyre example in the open system. It's just completely open with no barrier at all. Like there's no tyre in the globe system at pressure. There's no tyre with a little gap to make this analogous to Earth. There's just a sky vacuum and gas with the availability to fill it. Nonsense. That's why we don't live on a globe Earth in a sky vacuum. It violates natural law. That's why it's nonsense. Uh, and my summary of that, of course, will get talked through. The bit that's important, the bit where his religion's wrong is where he'll start talking through me. And it's Zanik. You'll start talking when I point out that debunks your religion of a pressurised system in a sky yeah, vacuum. Uh, yeah, yeah. The summary's getting interrupted again. Yeah, it's very painful for these religious zealots who think they're on a ball at pressure in a vacuum. It simply isn't true. And when I point out that it violates natural law, they're going to talk through the summary of where it debunks their religious belief in a ball earth. They don't like it. It's true. It's natural law. Inviolable. You don't like gravity. You don't oh, like you rumpus. Ba you're, you're back, are you, Rumpus? Uh, Rump rumpus. Maybe Zanik can now have the opportunity to tell Rumpus that the second law of thermodynamics and the entropy law are one and the same thing because you seem to be under the stupid, no, idiotic... Let's, 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 let's just mute him. Thing. Coward bitch. That. Coward Entropy. bitch. Rumpus is a coward. Whoever's backing him up now talking to Rumpus, he's a coward. He's gone on mute while I, I pointed something? the same thing out. Let's see if he goes on server mute again. Don't back him up. Don't protect him. Don't protect him, please. I'm trying to talk to him without him talking through me, so I've got to control him because he doesn't want to listen. Zanik has made it very clear to me and an audience on record. Oh, he's back on server mute like a coward bitch <laughs> because everybody was going to run distractions while I asked him the same question. But because he's a complete coward... And he probably already knows that Xanax conceded they're the same thing. He won't listen to it. That's because Rumpus is a coward. Wouldn't we all agree, panel? That's very cowardly. Yes, yeah, so all he was saying was grab. Well, I had an outstanding yeah. question with him about the second law and the entropy law being one and the same thing. And when it came to that, everybody started to protect him, like he claimed was happening to Quantum Eraser. And when the obfuscation was blown away and he was forced to listen he went on server mute so he didn't have to listen that's cowardice he's lost he was so go ahead he was so eager he was so eager but now he can't be found no he won't listen to a question this is his only tactic now and it's demonstrating his cowardice to my audience i'm very grateful of it i put him on mute because he wants to talk through the question at nausea and when i say no i won't tolerate that i told him at the start of his session here that i wouldn't tolerate that and when I put him on mute so he has to listen, he can't talk through it, he goes on server mute, so he can't listen to it anymore. Total coward. 
Now, Why I'll just repeat it to the audience while he's here and not listening, because he's a coward, that he's been charged by way of Zanuck with his mistake that the second law and entropy are different things. They're not. We also want him to concede that. Zanuck's never going to tell him. He's also a coward. He won't challenge Rumpus. He's scared of Rumpus. No doubt about that whatsoever. He's also a coward. Zanuck, that is. Also, in idiotic, <laughs> he doesn't understand any of this stuff. Nevertheless, Rumpus is an abject coward. Won't listen to a question that points out his stupidity, so he puts his fingers in his ears. That's what he's doing. He's currently got his fingers in his ears while I point out that entropy is the second law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics is the entropy law. He won't tolerate that because he needs to obfuscate that point. And it's, it's this wingman. It's safe. wingman to the rescue. You had your opportunity to talk to him, Zanik. He wouldn't allow the question to come through. You certainly weren't going to ask it. You're an abject coward also. I was going to ask it. And do you know what I'm he did, okay. Zanik? Do you know what he did? I'm stuck no his do you know what he did, Zanik? He stuck his fingers in his ears. He's got them in his ears right now. He's server muted I'll himself. My ears. I'll, I'll face off. He's a coward. Entropy is not the same thing as the second law. He's a coward. He's an abject explain. coward. A server mute. Uh, Zanik, while I talk to Rumpus, who's come off serving mute. We're describing your cowardice. You're putting your fingers in your ears while we point out, oh, he's back on server mute. Fingers back in the ears from Rumpus. La, 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 la. <laughs> what the hell? What's wrong with you guys? I'm not listening. Yeah, I stopped. What, what happened was I stopped Zanik running up distractions by putting Zanik on mute while Rumpus was off server mute. And because his wingman was on mute, it meant he was going to be asked the question he realised and stuck his fingers in his ears like a complete coward. He'll only play if he's got people to back him up and run distractions, like Zanuck. You hear Zanuck just say it again, that the second law is not entropy. <laughs> the second law is not entropy. However, it could be. Uh, we've got you saying completely the contrasting opinion, which is the fact of the matter, which it is entropy. I've got you on record saying that, Zanik. No, I said that. No, you said that they were one of the same thing. We clarified it, you agreed, and you even repeated it. So now you're just a lying bastard. Entropy law. You're, right. you're a lying bastard. You also are a lying piece of shit. I've got you on record. Yeah. It's been published trimmed out summarized with you agreeing that the second law is entropy and they are one and the same thing you even repeated it back you can go find that i did not say that i'll go and get it right now no <laughs> worries i'll go and get it right now i said it was the entropy shut up about what you said i'm gonna go and get it until that time you're gonna shut up we're gonna listen to what you've said you lying bastard the second law don't tell us what you said about the second law I'm going to have to keep coming back and shutting you up while I go and look for it. We're going to clarify what you've just said. I've got it trimmed out. I told you already, it's the entropy law, but it's not the same. So it is the entropy law. So second law of thermodynamics is now the entropy law, where only two minutes ago it wasn't. That's why I held off. I knew he'd double back before I got to yep. the trimmed out clip. So now it's it is the part, entropy man. law, because these bastards need to deceive you. And that's precisely what they're doing. If you're a globe head and you're on their side, they are intentionally deceiving you because Zanix just told you it's not the entropy law. And when I told him I was going to prove him wrong with his own words that he clarified, he then clarified in total opposition that it is the entropy law. So they're deceitful bastards. There's no two ways about it. Rumpus is an incompetent coward and Zanix a deceitful little bastard. I said it is the entropy. Don't tell me what you said. Yeah, I'm sick of hearing it. You double speak. I've got this recorded. Within two minutes, you saying it is the entropy law and it is not the entropy law. Within two <laughs> minutes. So I don't need to hear what you now say about it. You're a lying piece of shit. You're a deceitful scumbag. Anybody who listens to you or the coward rumpus should know better. We do, 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 so are you trying to say, right, I just want to clear up, the second law can be explained in terms of entropy, are you trying to say that, he's just said the second law can be explained in terms of entropy, he's just said, hold on, hold on, you're saying it's the entropy law, but it's not entropy, 
<laughs> no, but entropy and the second law are not the same thing. Is that what thing. you're saying? Yes, they are. I've got a quote of you saying precisely that they are the same thing. Even agreeing to school your comrade, Rumpus, in precisely that. You're simply lying. All you are is a scumbag. And we're getting further and further away to why we're describing this, Zanuck. It's because your religion is a globe earth at pressure in a sky vacuum. And the entropy law... Uh, the entropy law applies to earth the gas we breathe would fill the space in your heliocentric world with a sky vacuum it applies here i told you that the entropy law also known as the second law of thermodynamics there we go that's all i need so the entropy law, also known as the second law of thermodynamics. Rumpus, the coward with his fingers in his ears, says they're not the same thing. And three minutes ago, you said they weren't the same thing. Anybody who doesn't realise where they're being lied to by Zanuck and Rumpus, you need educating. You're fools if you believe a word that either of these two idiots say. They're clearly trying to deceive you. Clearly. Some nice the background noise there, Zanuck. They believe what they're saying. Can I ask Zanuck a question? Can, yeah. can gravity overcome entropy? What do you mean by that? Uh, can you explain Dropping the question further? the gas from uh, occupying all potential microstates. Occupying all potential microstates? Yes. Are you, are you confusing that... <laughs> Entropy is some type of magical force that pushes things outward? <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said entropy, the entropy um, is an increase, or increase in entropy means objects or gas want to fill potential, all potential microstates. How many microstates does the sky contain, and how does gravity stop that from occurring? Because gravity applies a force to objects, which is called a force. And that force is what like you call the same a force. Thing. Gravity is not a force, you freaking bug. Gravity head. causes a force. Gravity. No, gravity is not a force. Gravity causes a force. Hold on, hold on, everyone, calm down. Force. Chocolate. Chocolate. Can we get some quotes, please, for Xanax's benefit? Can you quote maybe Musa? Yeah, gravity is not a force, but you can think of it as a force. Xanax? Weight is a force. Wait. We're not talking about weight. Wait, you wait. were asked about gravity and its effect on the available number of microstates. That's what the question was about. Not weight. So you're dumb. You said that gravity is a force. You're wrong. Again, overtly trying to deceive people. The current rhetoric is quite explicit. Gravity is not a force. I didn't say it was. Yes, you did. You said exactly that. Again, within two minutes of him specifically stating that gravity is a force, he's just confirmed the current rhetoric in total opposition to his statement. Again, if you are in any misapprehension that Zanuck's not here to deceive you, you're deluded. He's clearly here to deceive. It's full of shit. I mean, we did go through this before, right, Zanuck, with this gravity is not a force, but it causes a force. Yeah, about eight months ago. Yeah, we... So you said you were going to come back with citation that says gravity causes a force, and oh, yeah, you came did. back with That's nothing. correct. Yes, that's right. Wait, 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 hang on a second. Let's let's just go. The, let's use his own rhetoric. How does weight keep gases from occupying all potential microstates? Because the air having weight, weight being a force, has a direction, a vector, and a magnitude. <laughs> and that magnitude and direction is down and proportional to its mass. So it's going oh, really? forward. Stop. Typical gas behavior moves freely and randomly at high speeds. That means all conceivable vectors. Yet you have it going in only one vector. What? You see a problem with that? Yeah, it's wrong. The gas is moving <laughs> in all directions, not just down with this vector of weight. You know, you can't qualify gas in that manner. They use pressure, not weight, because it's moving freely and randomly in all directions. You can't stick it on a scale. Some of the gas that you try to put it on, bearing in mind you need a container, is going to move in other directions, not just this vector of down. So this is nonsense. Mostly down. I, not mostly down. Freely mostly. in all directions. <laughs> it's only mostly dead. <laughs> no, you're, maybe, you're just incorrect. Maybe so is, Maybe Zamek is just embracing the fiction in his religion right now. 
yeah, absolutely, it is just fiction. It is just a religion. We don't have gas that's freely moving randomly at high speed in all directions, simultaneously not filling a vacuum that rockets can go to easily because it's an open system. That violates natural law. The gas we breathe would fill the space. It would occupy all of the microstates. That's the point he's making. Double speaking dipshit. He contradicts himself with every other breath. Really? Yeah, you do. Yeah. We've yeah, got, really. We've got two examples yeah. so far. Three, if you include the one that was a minute after the first one, two minutes later. The force acting on them. No, no, gravity's not a force. You're deaf. Maybe it was because you were talking the entire time while we were breaking this down, so you didn't have to address any of it. I, I understand that that's how you fundies operate. Don't listen, just talk, and then ignore anything that's put to you. It doesn't matter, though. We've managed to demonstrate within uh, three separate occasions, with two examples, that you will say one thing and then completely contradict yourself within two minutes when pressure comes. So when I say, oh, you've said entropy and second law are not the same, I'll go and get a quote where you agree that you'll educate Rumpus, who's currently got his fingers in his ears because he's an abject coward and won't accept this fact that he's trying to obfuscate the Earth as an isolated system as a defence to the second law of nature, of thermodynamics, applying to the Earth. It does. It applied to an open system as demonstrated to you. And then all he's done is stick his fingers in his ear when it comes to us pointing this out. How ignorant and incorrect Rumpus is. He's a coward. You are a double-speaking fundy with a religious belief in Earth with pressure in a sky vacuum. Not possible. Violates natural law. What does not violate any laws at all. Yeah, it violates the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy would increase. We showed you. We had a vacuum, analogous to your sky belief that the sky is a vacuum, with bromine. Both contained, coincidentally. You had to contain both of them in that example to demonstrate this. But the gas, when he opened the little tap, which we don't have between us and the sky vacuum, we established that also. You decided to <laughs> absurdly put this word force onto the a tap, a valve. But that, we'll brush <laughs> past that nonsense as well when we point out that when we demonstrated it to you in a closed system, not isolated, so a demonstration that's not only applicable to an isolated system, we would be pointing this out to Rumpus and his dumbass if he didn't have his fingers in his ears because he wants to continually tell people that the second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth because it only applies to isolated systems in spite of the fact that you personally have had a demonstration of it applying to an open system where gas filled the space by way of an entropy increase. That's precisely what he was demonstrating, Zanik. Now, you agreed and also confirmed that you understood that the second law and entropy were the same thing. And you agreed that you would tell Rumpus this. Now he's here, you're here, and he's got his fingers in his ears. And you're talking through me and ignoring the questions that are put to you in terms of the available microstates that space would have. Where did entropy increase with the tire? Uh, you, we sh I, I just explained this, but you were talking. So you didn't listen to me, so you can ask the same question again. The entropy increase was demonstrated when the gas filled the space. The bromine filled the vacuum. This was demonstrated, again, for the audience's benefit, so that he doesn't have to address this demol demolition of his religious assertion. He's going to talk through this rather than listen to it. I'm answering him with the entropy increase that's been demonstrated to him. It's the second attempt. There's no way he's going to respond to the fact that he's had this demonstrated. The demonstration obliterated Rumpus's stupidity that the second law only applies to isolated systems when upon demonstration with a vacuum, analogous to your sky, and bromine, analogous to the gas we breathe, it filled the space by way of entropy increase. That was the demonstration you had, Zanik. Again, recorded, trimmed out, showed to an Wait, audience. So and now you seem to have amnesia and a need to talk through this. Yes or no? Yeah, you're talking through me. No, I, I... Yeah, 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 you're talking through me. You seem to have amnesia. You seem to have forgotten that we demonstrated this entropy increase and explained it to you verbally, Zanik. Now amnesia set in and you're asserting with double speak that the second law and entropy are different and it doesn't apply to the earth like Rumpus, the stupid one, you agreed to educate with this incorrect assertion that they're two different things. Entropy applies to earth. If the sky was a vacuum like that vial that was shown to you in demonstration, then the gas like the bromine in demonstration would fill the space. That's an entropy increase. We showed it you, Zanik. Entropy increase of what? The Earth? The gas filling the space is a demonstration of an increase in entropy. If I close the valve, there's no... No, no, not if we close the valve. <laughs> no, not if you skirt past 
what I've just attempted for about four minutes to badger into you while you talk through me and ignore it. No, not a different example that wasn't shown, Zanik. That's why you're a fundy globe ed double speaker. The example was how your gas would fill the space in your model. The gas we breathe would fill the sky vacuum, like was demonstrated to you. Now, there was no demonstration where he closed the tap, he opened the tap, and the gas filled the space. That's an entropy increase. That's the fourth time I've answered the question you put to me. You've not acknowledged it, you've suddenly changed the example. Fundy globe head loser. Yeah? Be increased. Yeah. So what he did was he talked through every word. So he doesn't have to listen. Does, does he think entropy didn't increase with that example? I don't understand. I won't be able to establish there that. There must be a gradient inside of that too. <laughs> we won't be able to establish that with what him because he won't shut fire. up. Right now, he's talking. He's, ne he's never going to allow a full sentence to come from anybody that can demolish his religion Zanuck. ever again. Zanuck. The, the simple the question. Guy in the, the video. Of the See? He's, not, he's he not allowing it. the valve. He's not allowing it, chocolate. Zanuck. There's no point talking to him, chocolate. He literally will not allow any single... He's go now ahead. saying, go ahead through me. Can he's can now I saying, go me, ahead. Zanuck? It's another tactic they use, Chocolate. Is that cool? <laughs> it's not cool, Zanuck. Chocolate. Now you're doing it to me, Chocolate, while I try and get the same sentence out five times. I'm, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah, he's saying, go ahead, while I'm trying to explain that he literally hasn't listened to me demolish... His assertion that we have a sky vacuum with Earth at pressure, it violates natural law. He's tried to double speak his way around his double speak that it's both entropy and second law the same and entropy second law different. He's obfuscated that also. He's then obfuscated the fact that he's had a demonstration he's agreed to with an entropy increase. The question he asked me being answered. He hasn't acknowledged a single word of it. He's talked through every word of it. Now he won't let a coherent question come his way. He'll immediately start talking when he senses that it's a question. In other words, the available microstates as an example, how the sky as a vacuum would have plenty of availability for the gas to fill the space, as described in the second law, with microstate examples by Paul. That will also get off. That will never get an answer. You know, he'll fundy double speak around it and claim that it's kind of closed. No, it isn't. Just violates natural law. The sky is not a vacuum. Go ahead, Chocolate. Ask the question. Uh, I just want to know that when the dude opened the valve and the gas went from one chamber into the other and equalized in there, what, was that an increase in entropy? For that entire system, yes. Right. For that system that, being that isolated. Was, that, Wow. Right. That system has to be isolated for that. No, no, there are no isolated systems in nature. <laughs> you, you really think that was an isolated system, Zanuck? It isn't. He's just being a lying bastard. So Holy we shit. have already established with Zanuck that it unequivocally is not isolated. It was a glass container. You gave him the example of if he put it outside, would the sun's heat make its way in and maybe increase the pressure of the bromine? Yeah, he, he agreed to all that. But again... Because it's destroying his religious belief of a sky vacuum and a sphere Earth, he suddenly got amnesia. He'll also need to talk Nathan. through this like he's doing now so that he doesn't have to address his amnesia. It was all explained to him. It's definitely not isolated. We've already gone through this. But because he's and a deceptive person, because he's a deceptive person, this being pointed wow. out will get talked through, ignored, and when it's clarified Wait. at length, he'll have amnesia. Wait, so, so Zanik, so you think that has to be an isolated system in order for the second law to apply to it? Even though you That's can clearly see that was not That's an isolated system, yeah. and He's just isolated systems it. don't exist. He's just talked through it, Chocolate. Again, you're destroying oh his God. religion, so he <laughs> talked through the end of the statement. It's painful for them, so they have to talk through it. Me pointing out that it's painful and he has to interrupt the summary that we've already gone through with him once through this process of him interrupting us, demolishing his religious belief of a sky vacuum by way of second law of thermodynamics. He's already interrupted, obfuscated, danced around and had him pulled by his short hairs around the reek until he understands it and concedes and we've got it on tape nice and clear. Now he's going to lie and say that that system was isolated again, just as he did last time. He's here to deceive people. I have to correct you, Nathan. More than once, you've gone over this with him. 
more than once. If you let me speak a sentence, I can maybe explain it to because, you. Because you don't want to listen. Because Zanik, you, you, you say you always say that you you think you know what you're talking about when you talk about entropy, like you're some type of an expert. But the guy who's conducting the lecture is showing you clearly how the second law applies. He's telling you it's an entropy increase when he opens the valve. He With is clearly, everyone in that class knows that that system uh, clearly is a isolated. closed he's system. No, he's just he's just. So how again. are you sitting here telling us, Zanik? How are you sit? How the fuck are you sitting here telling us that's an isolated system and that's the only way that the second law can apply to it? Good question. How the fuck are you really saying that, bro? He's a liar. Can I ask you a quick question? No, he's uh, asking I, you how you can. I just asked you a question. question. That's how you can sit here and lie to I us. I can say long. that because the example he uses is assuming an isolated. No, he didn't say that. It's not no, assuming you anything. Fucking what? Wow! So you're divining wow. thoughts now. Yeah, he's, he's divining. Assuming a, he's assuming an isolated system using a closed system. <laughs> right, right. Hang on, I, Zanuck, Zanuck, I you're a clown, bro. Zanuck, yeah. Oh Zanuck. my god. Hey, what do you say? If I cool that chamber down, what would happen to the the entropy in that container? If you cooled it down. So you mean if you mean if he entered it or left it, as in it's a closed system, so it's not isolated. Then now your your defense to this is to say he is because I divine his, divine his thoughts. He is considering it as isolated. Therefore, because he's considering this closed system demonstrating entropy as isolated, it only applies to isolated systems. Therefore, it doesn't apply to the Earth. That's yes. your bullshit hmm that makes sense let's no, not, it doesn't let's not forget let's not forget the fact that an isolated system would never have a valve <laughs> if heat left that container entropy would change would it not sorry that would that's not closed down. then so ass. not isolated then so, regardless, so, the mind. No, no, the it's a demolition coming. So, talk through every word. <laughs> it talk through every word. Because yes, yes, later we'll be told that we don't listen to him, right? I've listened to him. We've all heard what he said. Yeah, we've heard this double speak. Now it's time for non-stop rumpusing from him, non-stop interruptions, so that we can get away from the fact that we've heard his claim, and his claim is nonsense. He's demonstrating it in a closed system. His argument. Zanuck and Rumpus is to say that no, when he demonstrates it in a closed system, the second law of thermodynamics, that actually he's considering it as an isolated system. Therefore, the second law only applies to isolated system because when in demonstration with a closed system, he's thinking about it as an isolated system because I've divined his thoughts. And therefore, it only applies to isolated systems, this law of nature, and doesn't apply to my model of a globe Earth. Because that's not isolated. It's not even closed. It's completely open. Nonsense. Zanik, the second law of thermodynamics does apply to the Earth. It's a law of nature. If the sky was a vacuum, as in your globe Earth model, then the gas we breathe would fill the space. Can I add uh, one thing to it? And I think Zanuck hasn't said it, but he could say it because they do say it. Um, according to NASA, apparently whenever gravity doesn't work, uh, they just call it a gravity pocket. And I, I thought that was a, a novel answer. Ah, they got that from Look, space time bending. Though. What's gravity? That, 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 yeah, that's that's exactly whenever that's it doesn't work, space it's called a gravity pocket. And I was wondering why Zanuck didn't want to use that. That particular okay. example of entropy change, they talked about temperature because being not changing in that container. So they're implying that that is a isolated system. That test is done in every physics class Very around ridiculous. the world. Well Dude, known. I'll you won't give it up, Willie. Well, liar, bro. Yeah, he's not he's... a liar. He's delusional. Yeah, no, you, I'm not delusional. You, you, you apply yeah, I mean, it's one or the other, bro. Liar. No, you can't sit here and tell us you know what you're talking about, and you're clearly saying that he has an isolated system in his hand, in his yes. hands that he's showing us. He's when it's as, he's obviously a closed system. system. He specifically says Zanuck, temperature it, doesn't change. He says that in the video. Yeah, yeah. With an increase in entropy. Yeah, yeah. Change, right? 
Yeah, we pummeled with so that we pummeled that the other day when I asked you, <laughs> can you have entropy change without energy or temperature change? And you said no. No. <laughs> Over in this system, overall system, like not only the container, everything around it. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you have to define the system, Kwan. That's what. That's you have the to define you the don't system. Define what an isolated your turn. system? You have to find your <laughs> boundary. I think Where's he's, the boundary? he's said, yeah, like, you're, you're back drowning back here, bro. No, I the think he's what? trying to pull us back into the look outside argument. I think that's where this is going. For the valve. Thank God for the valve. Oh, the the valve is a force oh, that keeps yeah. the gas continuing, right? I or forgot. you can have another force. It doesn't Does matter where the force comes from. Be... This force we might as well go over this one. This Man. force, uh, did you go to the incoherent um, M. Scott <laughs> Beach Academy? You see, his hey, definition least I went to is At least I went to college, w, Charlie. Charlie. Whiskey Charlie, right? Walls of the container. According to you, force equals V, Victor, valve. Is that correct? Nope, force equals is a force. Valve. Force is a force, of course. Force equals it's a force. <laughs> force equals a force. The force is the force. Is force, 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 force is a force. force of course, force, of course, force, of course, force. force is the force. <laughs> it doesn't matter where the force comes from. It just is. And what I is this force? It has the Hold on. Of a force. What's the name of it? Force acts on okay, that what's gas, the name? What's the name of this force? What's the name of the force you're talking about? What's the name of the force? Let's just do his trick and talk through him nonstop. What's the force? What's the name of it? What's it called? What's that? The force you're describing when we're describing the valve we don't have in the sky to stop the vacuum from sucking out all the air that we have. And I'm clarifying, and he's talking through me because I'm asking him, when you're describing this force that's apparently a valve, yeah, I, I understand your religion of a sky vacuum, Zanik, is dying here. Now, that might require your thrashing elsewhere. We just laugh at you fundies when you talk non-stop, and when we ask you what force you're talking about, we all know that we've already taken apart that the force you're going to impose here is gravity, even though that's not a force and we've gone over this. So that requires you to talk through me. Because I'm going to summarise that we've already smashed any assertions that we don't need a valve, we've got a force. What force? Well, gravity, which is not a force. So this pathetic attempt of talking through me, every time I smash your religious belief of a ball earth in a vacuum, you think it's going to work? You think you're going to succeed when you talk through me like this? No, mate. The force you're talking about, supposed to be comparable to a valve stopping the gas we breathe filling the sky vacuum by way of an entropy increase, your valve, which you think is a force, nonsense, is going to be gravity, isn't it, Zanik? No, it's weight. Weight is... No, 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 no. Weight would be <laughs> down and gas expands in all direction, you thick man. Now, I realise that, again, I'm pointing this out and you're talking through me. I'm protecting my audience from that and letting them have the concise rebuttal. No gas expands in all directions. You're stupid. Mostly down with it has... And this is gravity, the force I've asked you about that we're getting further away from, you fundy double-speaking pretender clown. The force is going to be gravity, isn't it? You've said, no, it's weight... Well, we're talking about gases. Again, for the audience's benefit, while I'm pointing out the demolition that destroys his sky vacuum belief, he's talking through me. Because that's his only tactic currently, to talk through me and not, in his mind, let the audience hear that the question on the table is what force is it you're referring to when you describe a valve we don't have between us and the sky vacuum? Which force? Wait, no, gas expands in all directions. Do you want to try again? I've already predicted it is gravity. You know it, you're just obfuscating it. It's gravity, isn't it, nope. Zanik? It's weight. He's no, gas expands in all directions, you complete retard. Mostly down. Not mostly down, you complete <laughs> retard. That's not mostly what gas down. does. That's not the behavior of gas. That's not what gas does. Your fundamentalist religious assertion that we've got a gravity force that makes gas go mostly down is utter nonsense and violates gas behavior. So no, all directions, randomly in all directions at high speed. So I ask again, because he can't answer with gravity, 
It's not a force. So he's got weight. Gas isn't behaving like a solid. It's not pressing down. It's expanding in all directions. And given that behaviour of gas, gas would expand to fill the available volume of a sky vacuum, what you call outer space. That's why you've got to obfuscate with your little tactics and start describing weight when describing gas that expands in all directions. You're useless. Can I, ask, can I ask Zanuck a question? Well, because I've pointed out that weight, where we've got to the point where he said, what force for this valve we don't have between us and the sky? He said, wait, I've smashed it, so now you get a question. Rather than him not talking through every word I say like he is now, and then responding to the fact that no, weight isn't applicable, gas expands in all directions, you think it's time for you to ask a question. I'd rather he accepts that we're destroying his religious belief in a sky vacuum. And that's where, that's where he's going to talk. Me smugly pointing out that this destroys your religious belief that we've got out of space with rockets and stuff and satellites and stuff and orbits and stuff. All that's dead. Dead because of the second law of thermodynamics. So it's incredibly important to Zanuck that he obfuscates this. And when I point out that it's not weight we're talking about, we're talking about gas... Somebody else on his side will run a bit of a distraction and think, oh, no, I'm going to ask him a question now. No, no, no. Zanuck's being pummeled. He said, wait, he's wrong. Gas doesn't behave that way. Now, will he ever we'll address go. that? Will we ever get close to him addressing it? Probably not. An acceleration acting on air or gases will give it a force. Oh, really? And that, that force would be gravity, would it? Is it what I summarised earlier that we pointed out and smashed that that's not a force? Weight is a force. So we've already circled back within 10 seconds. I'm really good at this, whoever wanted to ask him a question. No, we've already pummeled this. You're just slow and stupid and think that circle jerking me won't undo the demolition. That weight isn't gas expanding in all directions. Freely and randomly at high speed in all directions. Not weight. That's not a rebuttal. Mostly... Mostly. So mostly down, so we're getting the same circle jerk for the second time. How quickly can I whip this moron round the drain? No, mate. Gas expands in all directions. Same rebuttal. Mostly down. Mostly down. <laughs> down the drain we go with a flat earther absolutely whipping a globe head down the drain with his crap argument of weight. No, gas will never change its behaviour as Arwen takes the reign of rumpusing me also. Yeah, weight is not gas behaviour. Gas expands in all directions. It's qualified with pressure. Freely and randomly in all directions. Saying mostly down is nonsense and not gas behaviour. Talking through me, summarising that mostly down isn't gas behaviour is also not a rebuttal. It is a rebuttal. It's what happens with gas. What, that it freely and randomly expands to fill the available volume? In all directions or will the response for the fourth time be mostly down mostly down no not mostly down freely <laughs> and randomly in all directions <laughs> not <laughs> mostly down if it was mostly down you wouldn't have any air upon reverest because none of it would be going up it always goes up it just gets produced at ground level where the most concentration is but it definitely makes its way up yeah that's how gas behaves Definitely not mostly down. Freely and randomly in all directions. That's the seventh time I've given this circle jerking fundy with a religious belief in a sky vacuum the exact same rebuttal. And the only thing you can do is whip himself down the drain with mostly down, which is not the case with gas. Mm -hmm. Mostly down is the new gradient rebuttal. That's why we have we have more. If it's mostly down, what's what's happening to the to the gas that doesn't go down? Does that leave the system? It almost goes down. It piles up. It's called hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic that, pressure. That, that hydrostatic that piles pressure. Up. Oh, baby! <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Clear what, the airways. What does hydro mean? <clears throat> and there he goes again, breaking down. Hy hydro means water. Oh, not gas then. <laughs> so we're not talking about gas then you complete retard hydro means water under liquid. yeah so gas is freely and randomly expanding in all directions to fill the available container and this hydrostatic pressure would be achieved if you crammed forced applied 
pressure by way of condensing it into a smaller and smaller and smaller container until all of the gas was behaving like liquid because it was so close together that it couldn't behave like gas anymore, which is to say freely and randomly expanding in all directions. Not mostly down, I might add. In all directions. He hasn't attra attacked that yet. Can I make it official? I think he's contracted a new variation of double down syndrome, and this variation is called mostly down syndrome. That's the perfect end to the show, Arwin. So with that, it's, it's, it's like mostly. It's the same thing as mostly open, right? It's the same thing. They want to mostly know down on every right. single thing. Kind of always in random directions, but kind of mostly down at the same time. It's not binary. It's not freely randomly all directions. It's mostly down. Even though the gas what? is produced at ground level and makes its way up to the top of Everest, it's going up. You know, it's not mostly down. It's it's going up. You know, and when they say, why is the highest concentration at ground level? Well, because that's where it's produced. It's not being produced in the middle of the sky and then working its way back down. You know, in the case of the water cycle, the gas goes up and comes back down as liquid. You know, it's definitely not gas making its way back down. Gas isn't going mostly down. Liquid, on the other hand, in the form of the gas cycle that is water, that's going down as a liquid and going up as a gas. Only up. Isn't that amazing? Not mostly down at all in the water cycle. You complete dipshit. Right. Yep, dipshit. And he answered the second half of the definition. Did you hear, hear all that noise? What? That that noise is Zanuck hoping that what is said now isn't heard by an audience. Well, I'm replying yeah. to Paul on the chat. So, so hydrostatic. So hydro's water. What does static mean? Not moving. Not moving. <laughs> <laughs> Gases are moving at high speed freely and randomly in all directions. So it's neither hydro, water, or static. Man, you are really stupid. So you're going to use a false equivalence. You're just going to decide that water is how gas behaves? What, so you can get it always going mostly down, like water does? Yeah, water from the sky has had the gas make its way up. Mostly up, Zanik. Mm. No, mostly down. No, mostly up. <laughs> yeah, the water comes I back think down. This one has kind of made him mostly down. He, he's stupid. The water comes back down. When it condenses from a gas to a liquid, then it comes down. But actually, to get from the ground to the clouds, it went mostly up, you complete retard. No, it doesn't go mostly. <laughs> the force is not mostly. Kind of mostly. <laughs> the force of other things around it are more than those forces. What, the ones the that are going up? Mostly up, though, right, dickhead? The force is all... Sorry, now he's just going to flap around and obfuscate every question again. It's back to this shit. As soon as we smash their religion... He's de been demolished. He said, no, it's weight. No, it isn't. It's gas. It's expanding in all directions. He said, no, it's behaving like water. It's hydrostatic. Water not moving. No, no, it's not that either. Not mostly down. Not hydrostatic. Expanding freely in all directions. Same rebuttal over and over and over and over again. Now we've got to the point where that's been obliterated. And what does he do? He thinks it's his time to ask questions. No, it's time for you to accept your religion of a sky vacuum's dead, mate. And the gas that you said is mostly going down... In the case of the water cycles, going up. Well, let me get this. Let me get this straight. So, weight can uh, stop entry for entropy from increasing. That's what I'm hearing. The weight of the air in this particular, in this process of the air in that system, you want to call it isolated or not. If it doesn't escape, then the entropy didn't change. Sorry, it went up. You said mostly down was your rebuttal when I point out the gas expands in all directions. There was a back and forth, kind of like a debate, but a debate where I'm winning and you're obfuscating every rebuttal with a rinse and repeat of the same exact shite that I demolish. Now, we've reached the point where you're saying gas mostly goes down. You've equivocated with hydrostatic equilibrium. Hydro, water, static, not moving. Gas expands in all directions, so it doesn't address my rebuttal. Now we've reached the point where I've demolished your assertion that gas is mostly going down with the use of the water cycle. Not down. Water up. cycle? Up. Why yeah, the, 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 the gas. Water cycle? Yeah, saying the same claim I've made with an upward inflection will make me repeat it to you. Yeah, that's not a rebuttal either. An upward inflection repetition isn't a rebuttal. Yeah, the water cycle is the gas going up. Mostly down. 
<laughs> not mostly down. That's where you're fundamentally retarded. I'll say it again. The you gas, like right, evaporates from a liquid form on the ground. And then it makes its, its way up. Now, either you're thick or it's because we're demolishing your fundamentalist religious belief that the Earth is a sphere with pressure and a sky vacuum and available volume for that gas to fill. And your rebuttal to that is saying, well, gas mostly goes down. And I'm showing you with, with a demonstrable example. I can look out my, my window and see clouds. Sometimes I can even see the gas evaporating. It's amazing. You can see the way it distorts other things that you're looking through it as that vapour gets in the way of things in the distance. It's amazing, this effect of that gas going up. That also demolishes your religion, that you've got a right. sphere, you know, with pressure. Because your rebuttal to that is to say that the gases are going down. They're not. You're wrong. You're stupid. You're I think he's trying it, it to, it also, it he's also trying to negotiate out. with natural law. He's... Like, it goes in all direction. That's entropy, right? This is natural law. This is in all things. So he's now trying to contract with, like, God. Like, not, it's not all directions. It's, let's make it a little bit more downwards because that's correlates that's more down, with exactly. gravity uh, idea. Right? He said it again, right? circle jerking prick. Oh, completely ignore my rebuttal to someone else talks and then just assert the same thing to Arwin. Now, that's not going to fly either. Not down, down, go boom, boom. Not gravity, not... Wait, all of these things have been smashed by me, but Zanuck, in debate. just want to point out, just for the audience's benefit, that me and Zanuck are having a debate, but everything he comes back with on the side of a globe earth in a vacuum is demolished, completely obliterated by me, a flat earther. So we are definitely having a debate. This isn't a circle jerk, and I'm not censoring Zanuck. I'm responding to him. However, while I'm responding to him, what Zanuck has a tendency to do is talk through every word I say, because it defeats his sky vacuum belief. So that requires some obfuscation tactics to be incorporated into this little discussion that we're having. Call it a debate, if you will. But ultimately, we're at the point where Zanuck's asserted weight, I've demolished it. Gas expands in all directions. He's asserted it mostly goes down, and I've given him an example of gas that only goes up, forms clouds, and then comes back down as liquid. The liquid's coming down, the gas is all going up. So it's completely shattered his bullshit rebuttal demolishment, I should say, of his religious belief that the sky is a vacuum. No, 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 gas is going to expand in all directions. Fill the available volume it has to fill. It's called entropy. It's the second law of thermodynamics. They're one and the same thing. Your cohort, Zanuck, that guy called Rumpus, the guy who is a coward and stuck his fingers in his ears because he needs to assert that even by demonstration when you show this law of nature applicable in a closed system. He wants to assert to an audience of fundy idiots who also think they're on a sphere that it doesn't apply to the Earth because it only applies to isolated systems even though it demonstrated it to you. Even though you think gas is being held by weight going down boom boom when I'm giving you examples of it all going up, you've got no rebuttal to this. What we're doing here, Zanuck, as flat earthers, is ending your religion of a globe. So the cycle of water. Any rebuttal to that or just total silence? Maybe someone will want a new question before Zanuck maybe cries no. in a little corner, runs there, away, there, doesn't address that the gas. Weight. Yeah, doesn't address there, that the gas is going up. 1.2 kilos per cubic meter. It has weight. Sorry, I, the I, gas in the water cycle is all going up. And is that going to get addressed? Maybe I need to whip him down the drain for the next 20 minutes with the same rebuttal over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. That it's got some sort of weight. Yeah, the gas in the water cycles all going up. Will that ever get a rebuttal? Yeah, things get moved around, for sure. There's things? What about the water cycle? That thing. That's got gas all going up. How about you address that, you fundamentalist religious zealot who's having his ass handed to him by a flat earther and cannot defend his globe religion? How about you address that you've said gas is going down, go boom, boom, You've failed to prove gravity as a force. You've called it a weight and equivocated with hydrostatic equilibrium. All of which I've just destroyed. Because the Earth's obviously and observably flat. It's not a globe. We're not in an open system with rockets going into a vacuum and the gas not filling it. That's nonsense. Air has weight. We all know how much air weighs. If things are moving around in the atmosphere, it's due to convection, and other types of forces acting on the air. Air 
just like any other mass, moves in response to a force. Sorry, so in this example that I've given you in rebuttal to you saying the gas goes mostly down, I've used the water cycle and it's going up, still not being addressed, still being ignored, still the demolition by a flat earther of the assertion that the Earth's a sphere. We're destroying well, why it. Why does the paper go up? Uh, Why go does water up. vapor go up? Oh, so it's going up now. Not mostly down, go boom, boom. You're now asking me why it goes up. <laughs> because it's less dense. So it's going up, not mostly down. Not a defense that holds the gas he's here. He's telling us now why it goes up. Yeah, he's now asking us why the ba bastard gas that he said mostly goes down, go boom, boom, is going up. He's going to ask me why it goes up. That's my rebuttal. That's how I'm destroying your globe religion. And so far we're at the stage in this debate where your defense is it mostly goes down. And now you're asking me why it goes up. That's because you've Voyage lost. You. You've lost, Voyage Zanik. You. Yet the end of your rebuttal was that it mostly goes down and your defense is to ask me why it goes up. You've lost. It's a real force. Force? What? The force of go down, go boom, boom? It's going up, you stupid, fundy dickhead. It's not going down, not mostly down. You're asking me why it's going up. Buoyancy. Uh, sorry, now you're just spewing religious rhetoric terms. Rather than addressing the fact that your rebuttal to now was that the gas mostly goes down. Now you're going to defend why it's going up. Buoyancy is a force upward. So it not going mostly down then. <coughs> Everything Ooh. so not going Ooh. mostly down, which was your previous rebuttal. Now we've got a fundy double speaker defending the fact that it doesn't go mostly down. Hello, audience. You've got a globe religion, and these people come here to deceive you, to lie to you, and when they debate the subject and get smashed to bits by people like me, proud flat earthers, smashing the globe rhetoric. He's saying his defense to this nonsense that the gas isn't going to fill the space because it's isolated, even though we can demonstrate it with closed. It's because we've got weight. We haven't. Gas expands in all directions. And we've got hydrostatic equilibrium. We haven't. Gas isn't static. It's expanding in all directions. Then he says it's mostly down. I point out that gas isn't going mostly down. The water cycle disproves that rebuttal. The gas is going up. Now he's challenging me. With buoyancy, which is essentially part of his gravity claim from earlier, we've also smashed. It's part of that rhetoric. He's just trying to weasel it in at this late stage. He's getting me to defend why it's going up. No, that is the rebuttal that ends your claim that the gas wouldn't fill the space because it's mostly going down, go boom, boom. So I'm not going to defend why it's going up. It going up obliterates your religion that it's both, both going down, go boom, boom, and not contained because it's not isolated. Yeah, we've destroyed your sky vacuum, Zanik. You've done nothing but mute me. I muted you at all! I muted Rumpus when I wanted Rumpus to actually listen to the fact that the second law of thermodynamics and entropy are one and the same thing. Now, I appreciate that you needed to back him up so he didn't have to answer that question so he can go about his merry business telling people they're different when they're not different. You haven't gone and attacked him for this. And when I point out that you've lost in this argument, because the gas isn't mostly going down, go boom, boom. It's going up and you've now, as a defence, tried to get me to justify it going up when your argument was it's going down, go boom, boom. Therefore, not filling the space. Well, no, mate. If it's going up, it's not going down. It's not mostly down. So you've lost this argument. The gas is definitely going up. And gas, by its nature, fills the availability of the volume it has to fill. So the gas we're breathing, that. while he interrupts me with his fundy mute button, oh, you're going to accuse me of muting you. You just used the fundamentalist religious zealot globehead mute button on me. So it's projection. They need to mute me, and they talk through me to do it. And then they project that I've muted them. No, mate, you're talking through me. I know what you're doing. You're talking through me. Now... Rumpus takes a different tact. When I have a devastating question for him, i.e. why is it you're asserting the second law of thermodynamics and entropy are different when they're the same? We've even got Zanik to admit this. We've recorded it. He's later denied it and then in the sex second breath, two minutes later, has said that they are the same after saying they weren't the same in this call because he's a deceitful little shit lying to you about a religion about the globe being real and we having a sky vacuum. All of that's been smashed here in debate.
That's what's happened. We've got to the point where he says gas goes down, and then I point out it's going up. And what have we got now? What I've got to defend that it goes up. You're introduced gravity again with this word buoyancy. Now you've been smashed, mate. Unbelievable fundy. How dare you accuse me of muting you when you've talked through me non-stop with your fundy globe head mute button. What a cock. If you continue the double down syndrome, you'll end up mostly down. Does anybody know when boy when gravity was added to buoyancy? Uh, buoyancy because buoyancy was uh, was before gravity was even thought of. Yeah, buoyancy, buoyancy. Is effect. density is a cause. So their their appeal to buoyancy is nonsensical. It's still in effect. They haven't. They they have nothing. Zero. All just laws density. are real laws of the atmosphere. They include all we've spoken about. With the laws of the atmosphere. The atmosphere, the law of atmospheres talks about hydrostatic what, what pressure. What is the law of atmospheres, Anik? Hydrostatic forces are a real, a real thing. So is, the law, is the law of atmosphere what? that we must assume gravity? Yes. Well, well gravity is not a force. law of atmosphere. Yeah, gravity, gravity as a law is 100 years out of date, so why we would apply it as a force is beyond... It's just totally irrational. It's nonsensical. Gravity is not a force, so to assert that we have a law of the atmosphere that dictates we must assume gravity as a force, turning gas into something with weight, well, this is preposterous. Yes, air has weight, absolutely. Sorry, sorry, weight is down, and... Like before, we're at the top of the drain spiralling with a fundamentalist religious zealot constantly asserting the same thing. So we're back to gas goes down. No, water cycles. When I smashed this with water cycles, your next rebuttal was to get me to justify why it's all going up when you said it's mostly down. Mostly down? No, gas cycles. <laughs> your rebuttal to those gas cycles was to challenge me the one destroying your religion of a sky vacuum. The rebuttal therein being that we have hydrostatic equ equilibrium, gas that's not moving when it moves, that gas has weight, it isn't, it's expanding in all directions, and that you've got mostly down rebutted with the gas cycle that is water, and that vapour going up. And then when that we got to that stage, you then started inserting gravity by way of buoyancy and asking me to justify why... I've smashed your assertion that it all goes down, go boom, boom. Then you've interrupted me non-stop like you're doing now and claim that I muted you. Sounds like you understand it. Yes, those are all correct terms and explanations. Thank you. Sorry, that was just a, what, a, an affirmation that you've somehow done well when you haven't acknowledged a single word. Are, are you deluded? You've done, exa you've done exactly which, how you should have done. I've done exactly as I should have done. What demolished your religion of a sphere, earth, in a vacuum? Well, thank Played you very much. Perfectly. Thank you. Air has weight, mostly down. No, ga gas has gone up. Mostly weight down. Be down. We're back to this, circling <laughs> down the drain. That was a bit quicker this time, wasn't it, audience? So this time he's circle jerk back. Yeah, the water cycle debunks that notion that we've got gas mostly going down. And when I pointed that out to you, you challenged me to defend why it's going up. Do you not remember? It was about three minutes ago. And now you're talking through me. And now you're using the fundy mute button. He's muting me. He's muting me. He's muting me. Why are you muting me, Zanik? Why are you muting me? Is it because I'm destroying your fundamentalist, globe head, religious belief that the sky is a vacuum, defendable by air having weight going down, go boom, boom, and then asking me to justify why it's not doing precisely that. It's going up in the water cycle. Is that why you need to fundamentalist hey, religious cell mute me? Is that why you're enough. muting me now? Is that why because you're I muting me? I don't have me? a chance to say... Is that, is that why you're... I'm asking a question. Why are you muting me? I'm trying to respond to you. you no, like you're talking through me. That's what you're doing at nausea. Talking through me. Muting me. You, you also claimed I was doing it to you. And I'm asking why you're doing this. Which is to say, stopping what I'm saying being heard by talking through me and claiming that that's a response. A response comes after someone's finished talking, not mid-sentence when they're destroying your religious belief of a sky vacuum surrounding a globe that's got pressure with gas apparently always going mostly down, but then asking your opponent when he batters that nonsense into the ground with the gas cycle that is water, that it's going up. 
And you know, you're only rebuttal to that so far, other than all the shitty obfuscation we've got going on currently, is to ask me to justify why it's going up and reinsert gravity. Now, that's about the fifth time I've got us to the same stage in rebuttal where you are failing with your religious belief. Just maybe, what, five more minutes of obfuscation? And you will say again, mostly down, and I have to repeat again for a sixth time that we've got water going up. Maybe you'll ask me again to justify how it's smashing your nonsense of mostly down, go boom, boom, with buoyancy attached to gravity. That's the, about the seventh time I've summarised this, how you've been smashed, Sonic. Maybe a bit more fundy double speak, mostly down, go boom, boom again, maybe? Maybe mute me again. You can be I think you got it. Yes. The air does rise because of differential densities. It does have a force acting in it called its weight, and it causes a hydrostatic condition, which... No, it doesn't. Weight doesn't cause hydrostatic equilibrium. You have to force a gas into a very tight space, so there's no gaps between it. You're lying. You don't know what hydrostatic equilibrium is. You're a fundamentalist, religious, double-speaking, fundy liar. You don't know what this means. That's not what the Buoyancy gas is doing. Is the gas... I'm still possible. talking. Stop it's muting me. Uh, stop, muting me. stop muting me. Stop muting me. I'm going to have to mute you. You won't allow it. You won't allow me to debunk your nonsense. You've just said the gas is behaving. I haven't actually muted him just for the benefit of the audience. I didn't have to. He shut up eventually. Uh, no, <laughs> gas is not behaving in hydrostatic equilibrium. That's not how gas behaves. You have to force it to do that. So that's not how the air we're breathing behaves. That's a lie. Either you don't understand what's already been explained to him. Quantum Eraser went through it earlier. He explained that it's not hydro, it's not static, that's not how gas behaves. Now you've said it behaves in hydrostatic equilibrium. Either you're stupid, or it's just another tactic to get away from the fact that gas isn't going down, go boom, boom. It's going up, and so far all we've got is you inserting gravity by way of buoyancy, and asking me to justify why it's going up. We're back at this point. I just, Quick shot. Hydrostatic. It's crazy. Hydrostatic is not defined by the root words. Neil, Neil, please. Hydrostatic is not determined defined by the root words. Neil, Neil, please. I'm trying to have one sentence. Now you're referencing me. Hydrostatic is a term in physics used to explain explain how gases behave by stacking up on itself by the weight of the gases. Gas it has nothing to do. With stack up. Yeah, gas is a. I, I've already, I've already explained that to you over and over again, Sonic. They're moving freely and randomly in all directions at high speeds. They're not stacking up. And as I've already debunked Any this by God. pointing out that you would have to squash them into a very tight container to achieve that. What? Entropy what? is not asymmetrical. You can't be serious. Hydrostatic is a law of atmospheres. Talks about the air's weight. Piling up on itself, creating higher pressure to bottom, up. creating Define a hydrostatic pressure, please. It has nothing to do with it moving. It has nothing to do with water. Oh, well, then it's nothing to do with gas. Gas is definitely moving. So this has nothing to do with gas if it has nothing to do with moving. Do you understand what I've just said, or did you just completely ignore every word of it? He's it. just ignoring every single word, I say. No, no. no. Can't break it down. If it's nothing to do with moving while you fundy mute me, then it's nothing to do with gas. Gas is moving. Hydrostatic does not mean... He's just going to circle jerk me. He's going to ignore me. He's a fundy muter who he talks through and ignores. So I'm going to say it again for the fundy... No, I'm going to mute him. I'm going to mute you, Zanik, because you're not listening to me. So if you're on mute, I can only assume that then you have to listen to me. No, if it's not moving... It's the second time, third time I've repeated this rebuttal. If it's not moving, then it doesn't apply to gas. Because gas is moving freely in all directions. So this doesn't apply to gas if it's not... Moving. Hydrostatic doesn't mean liquid or water, and it doesn't mean not moving either. Static means not moving. <laughs> Hydro means water. So loosely translated, hydro, water, static, not moving. Water, not moving, is what that means, loosely translated. So that's absolutely no, what it means. The root words do not define the Sorry, term. Sorry, Zanik, Zanik. You cannot Zanik. define the term by the root words. You can, go, do you know what that go means? Go ahead, Nathan. define it for us. You're good in English. Okay, you do well then. in English. What I can tell. What does mean? The go root words do it. not define the term. You define it then. The root words do not you define, define the term. You define it then. Sorry. Define it then. Like pseudoscience. 
So, so are you going to? So he's going to sidestep hydrostatic equilibrium being defined by bringing up a new subject. I'll just point out that we're at the stage in the debate. I've got to bring it back on track because he's slowly getting his tactic to work, getting further away from the point that we've got gas going down, go boom boom, and he's going to equivocate with hydrostatic equilibrium. Now, hydrostatic is definitely not what we are achieving with the gas that's moving in all directions. Static, that's what static means. Static means not moving. And that's not what gas does. Now, the reason we're at this stage is because he said gas goes down. He's equivocated with hydrostatic. That's not what gas is. And then when I point out that gas isn't all going down or mostly down, it goes up. We've got to the point, we haven't got past it yet, where he asks me to justify that. Not going down, not hydrostatic, going up in the gas cycle that is water. You're never going to address this. You're a fundy who's lost. You've lost the arguments on it. Definitions on screen. I'm presenting the definition. Now, now put it on screen. I got it. <laughs> got it. Got it. I got it. Share my screen, Nathan. I have done. Okay, Zanuck, define hydrostatic pressure. The root words do not determine the meaning define of that term. Define it. He didn't. He didn't ask what the root words don't do. He asked you to define it. Hydrostatic is the weight of the air fluid stacking up on itself due to its weight in a progressive Wrong. fashion that causes. It doesn't know what it says. Pressure in the first sentence, so it doesn't say weight. In this definition, do you want to read your definition, please, quantum eraser? Yes, hydrostatic pressure refers to the pressure exerted by a fluid, gas or liquid, at any point in space within that flu uh, fluid. This is the key part. Assuming that go. the fluid uh, is uh, funding movement. Stop! 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 Quantum eraser. Stop! Rest. Stop! What's happened in the middle of the definition being read out is Zanik has decided to use the mute button on you. So it got to the point that you said this is the really important bit and Zanuck interrupted you with his fundamentalist religious zealot globe head mute button to stop the information reaching the audience. So before you read it out and read it out, you will if you are okay to do that. Zanuck, you've just used the fundy mute button while he read a definition that was put up on screen. You've not posted a thing and you were incorrect. You said, wait, wrong. So he's actually reading out and you fundy we muted him. Cause of hydrostatic pressure. So I'm not asking you to define, I'm asking you to explain why you fundy muted him in the middle of reading out a definition that destroys your globe. Was, and now you're fundy muting me, aren't you? Now you're fundamentally religious you're zealot muting me. And now I'm going to have to you're mute him. I've got no choice. I've got no choice. I've got to mute him. He's just interrupted an actual definition of hydrostatic being read out. He's deliberately and intentionally muted that from the audience, censored it from the audience. Now I'm trying to establish why he censored it from an audience, and he's done the same to me. So that the audience doesn't hear that his tactic is now to use his religious zealot mute button. I'm going to take you off mute. Now I've got it through to my audience without interruption that I want John to read out an actual definition of hydrostatic that will inevitably destroy your religious belief in a globe earth with a vacuum for a sky. So I'm taking you off mute and I'm going to give you the opportunity to sit there without interrupting this actual definition that contradicts your nonsense you made up. Go ahead, John. From Lumen Learning Boundless Physics, hydrostatic pressure refers to the pressure exerted by a fluid, gas or liquid, at any temperature in space within that fluid. Assuming that the fluid is incompressible and at rest. You got a problem with this last statement because the quintessential tenets of gases are, all gases are compressible and never at rest. So this statement with gas in here, it's just bullshit. Thank you Thanks. very much, for Quantum Eraser. So, no, the atmosphere yeah, you're my, describing... No, that's my time to clarify my position, actually, Zanik. You've been smashed. That's not your chance to undo the nonsense that we've just re 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 rebutted. That's not your opportunity. That's my opportunity. Not your chance to then fundy mute my point again. So we're back to the point where the gas is going up in the uh, uh, water cycle. It's not going down. It's not going to be equivocated with hydrostatic. You're incorrect, because gases are not at rest. They're not incompressible. They're expanding freely and randomly at high speed in all directions to fill the available volume they have to fill. So this hydrostatic equivocation you've used is just nonsense. Can I read my definition? We've just had the definition. 
I'll read it. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that is exerted by a fluid at equilibrium at a given point within the fluid due to the force of gravity. Hydrostatic pressure increases in proportion to the depth measured from the surface because of the increasing weight of the fluid exerting downward force above, as I said but, very succinctly earlier. It does not do have that. to do with gas only or a liquid only, which are incompressible. Gases don't do it that, and it's not your definition. This is from Lumen Learning, boundless physics. This is what hydrostatic pressure is. You're incorrect, as always. <laughs> Sorry, it's not quantum eraser. It's not like the shit that you just spewed. He's actually read it out from a source. He cited it. I got a, I got a site. I got the website right here. Google. Let's have it. Hold on. Let's have it. So here it is. In the chat. Hydrostatic pressure defined in great detail for your enjoyment. Where's it from? Yep. Yep. Okay. We'll take your definition. I don't have to look at your citation. It says gravity, right? Which yep. gravity? Which gravity doesn't matter. It has a force. It has weight. Weight. Oh, causes no, gravity the force. is not a force. Weight is a force. Quantum, you know this. Come oh, on. Sorry. Gravity is sorry. not a force. You're, not, you're a freaking clown show. Sorry, did his definition... Let's go through why. Did his definition smuggle in gravity? Yep. Oh, yes, really? Oh, really, Zanik? So, what? You're going to sneak in your fundamentalist religious assertions into your rebuttal? What? We've already smashed gravity, mate. It's not a force. Why would you smuggle it in in this definition? Gravity That's causes a force. I didn't ask what gravity did. We've already smashed it. It's not a force. It doesn't cause anything. It's not a phenomenon. It's the bending of a conceptual medium known as space-time. It's labelled correctly as pseudo Ramonian force space. It's pseudo. It's sham. It's fake. It's not real. It's not a force. We've already dealt with this. But what, you're going to go and dig out a citation that smuggles in gravity? How dare you? We've already defeated that, mate. Why would you smuggle it in in this definition? And that's weird because it says the force of gravity. It doesn't say the, the, the force caused by gravity. Oh, it's, <laughs> it even describes it as a 100-year out-of-date force. Oh, it's, it's not been a force. This citation has got a 100-year out-of-date rhetoric attached to it. It's got 100-year out-of-date force of gravity in your citation, you fool. Didn't you read it? Did you read it? It says gravity. We've already dealt with that. Are you going to rebut that or not? Yeah, that's how we figured out it said gravity. We read it. <laughs> I read it. I read it. it. Yeah, you read it. You read it. We read it. It says gravity. We've already smashed it. It's not a force. I told you, Paul, you can't break a word by its root words and get a definition. Right, so we're back to this circle jerk shit. Your definition's got gravity in it. It's assuming a force that's a hundred years out of date. You want to know? I'll give you a thousand of them if you want. Are all Sorry, what, what, what? Why aren't you rebutting what I've just said? You've smuggled in a definition with something we've already addressed in this debate. So you don't want the word gravity? Is that what Sorry, we've already smashed gravity. It's not about wanting it. You've smuggled it back in when we've already defeated it, you dumb fuck. It references it briefly. It said oh, it briefly references something we've demolished. Oh, I it see. Oh, right. It only briefly mentions it. It's critical to the definition, you stupid spastic. So, no, you've smuggled in something we've already demolished. Gravity, not a force. The weight of the fluid. No, not the weight. No, that would be mostly down. So we're back to this point. We seem to destroy his argument, and he circles jerks us back to a previous point. Not mostly down. Boom, boom, matey. We've already gone through this. <laughs> You can They're ignore it all you want. Learn, Doesn't mean it's not uh, true. Nathan, they're actually not here to learn anything. They're trying to teach you. Trying to That's teach you, Silent. Pay attention. You might learn something. Mm -hmm. well, from, <laughs> from a delusional Dunning-Kruger demonstrated. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, You're out of your ahead, mind. Go ahead. Test me Zanik. on any of it. You're, who I, are you I, teaching? I double dare you. Okay. Paul, are you there? Oh, is, is he gone? Oh, damn it. I was going to get the microstates question again. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Test me on anything. Danik, do you even know your name? What's your real name? <laughs> he talking about... 
the change said, in entropy. Test me on Are anything. Talking about a change in entropy. I just want to point out. He asked me to test him on anything. What is your real name? Yeah, test me. Yeah, in a test. When I've taken That's tests in the past, Sonic, the first thing it asks me to do on the test is write down my name, and they expect that name to be my real name. So is you asked me. To, you've asked me question? to test you. You've asked me to test you. Now I'm testing that, you. Step one in this test. Yes, equals D Q. Sorry, he's just talking through me. Fundy mute time. You said test me on anything. Tests I've taken have the name of the participant of the test on the front. What is your name? My name is Stephen Helm. <laughs> He had to think about it. <laughs> I had to think if I wanted to reveal. <laughs> I had to think of a fake name. Check it out. I don't want to check it out. I'm going to choose to trust what he's saying. It's okay. Must wait, down. wait 15 seconds and then ask him again. See if it's the same. Question. Good point. Actually, what was it? Stevens, what? That was only five seconds. Oh. Are you asking me if it's something that's relevant to our discussion? That's good. Bit of an in-between in bit. He needs that for the processes, the cogs to turn. So what is your Go name? Ahead. What is your name? Stephen Helms. Stephen Helms. Helms Deep. Fair enough. No elves are coming. Is that actually your name? <laughs> you guys are funny. Let's talk <laughs> physics here. Come on, why are you talking about my name? What does that mean? have to do anything to do with it? Let's we're go. Just, Let's move on. Uh, we're doing a test, and <laughs> and prior to now, you're looking for. prior to now, we've not had anything what that seems remotely truthful from you. What we've had from you up until now is. For instance, but not no, limited I'll to. No, I'll give you citations. I'll give, give you an example. You but you're talking through. You're Let's muting me. You're muting me. You're asking me why I'd ask you again, and you're muting me. You're muting me as per usual. You're muting me. You've asked me a question. You're trying to answer. I'm getting muted. Getting muted. I'm going to have to stick you on mute, Zanik. Zanik, do you want me to forcibly put you on mute because you're not allowing me to answer your question? Why would I ask you? Is that your real name? Well, the reason, if you'll allow me, without fundamentalist religious zealot muting me, to explain. We asked you if you'd gone to Rumpus, a coward, guy put his fingers in his ears, and told him what you told us and we had recorded, which was that you understood and appreciated and declared quite openly, and it was recorded, that the second law of thermodynamics is the entropy law. You even said, yes, the entropy law is the second law of thermodynamics. I believe that that was pretty much a verbatim quote of you. Now, later, yes. you come here on this show. I'm still giving an example. But you try and fundy mute this example, I would, because I'm obviously demonstrating well, where you've lied. So it needs interruption, right? I, I, I will mute you. And I'm going to point out to the audience that I'm in the middle of an example and justification based on a question he's asked me. So he asked me why I'd ask him for, if that is actually his name. And I'm telling him that on this very show, he has stated that the second law of thermodynamics is not entropy. Now, we waited about two or three minutes. No, and then I didn't he, say that. He, he then stated, it's been recorded. I didn't say uh, that. He, he's now interrupting Fundy Mute time. Give an example. It's been recorded. Now, I, I don't want to have to point out. I, it's an obfuscation me. tactic. Pardon me. So while I'm pointing out his lies, he's Fundy Muting me. Of course he is. Because he can't allow me to point out that on this very show, he's both said the second law of thermodynamics is not entropy. And he said that it is entropy on this very show. Now, that would mean that you contradict yourself. You'll make a statement that's positive and then give the contrapositive statement two minutes later. So when you make a statement about something like your name, I automatically think that you're a deceptive liar because I've demonstrated it on multiple occasions to many thousands of people who've watched you lie and deceive my audience, Sonic. So that is why, given that you've lied and deceived me and my audience, on multiple occasions, that's why I'd ask if you're lying and deceiving in this instance. Do you understand? I understand. And I again, I said that the entropy law was a second law of thermodynamics. They're not the same thing, though. There's a difference. I don't know how I, else to explain I, I, it. You can't believe it. I 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 can't believe
can't believe entropy it. Entropy is part of the second law. They're not the same thing. <laughs> entropy is not part Dude, of the second you're, law. It is you're totally mixed up, man. It is mixed up? He's delusional. Law. Yeah, that's... He just contradicted himself in the same breath. Yeah, he did. But, but, yeah. Delusional, mixed up. Dude, you're all over the place. You need to go back to the drawing board and just. So, are you saying down. the entropy law is not about entropy? <sighs> the entropy law is how you explain. Listen, the second entropy. law of thermodynamics can be explained in terms of entropy. <laughs> I, right. God. So it's so it's a complete contradiction to what he's just said. That's why I asked you uh, if that was really your name because we don't believe a word you say. You're all liars. You rumpus the coward. You're all liars. And when it comes to us pegging you down on being a liar, Rumpus won't tolerate that. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's his job to come and lie to an audience or what, but it seems that way when I try and peg him on the fact that entropy and the second law are the same thing, you're here dancing around it, same as it is. So you're all liars. No, Rumpus is just an enthusiast, really. He does it because he can. You're a liar, Zanuck. Remember I told you that about a year ago? Remember? Blame it on the brain. Yeah, yeah. Ah, stop it. And with that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you <clears throat> to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. A massive thank you to today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!